Hi there. Hello. And Jim. Hey, everybody. It's the beginning of May in Salinas, California. And it's oh, a rainy day. Like, where is that voice coming days. from? <laughs> I try to, the live, the Facebook lives, when you click on them and then like to see what the comment is or whatever, then it starts playing the video and then, and then you click on it to go away. Like you would normally make it go away and it, mm -hmm. it just goes small in its place. Yeah. Hi, Jim. Hello. So last week, mm -hmm. um, I, had something that just had me tired all the time and uh, i'm not sure i'm recovered enough to really stay for this but i thought i'd show up for the start anyway you have covid it's definitely not covid i you uh oh. no no cough no sore throat like when i did have covid and i took and i used one of the leftover uh test kits and it was it came out negative it's one of those things that we that we used to get all the time and never assume it was a deadly disease. Yeah. <laughs> now we're like, oh my god, it's going on. Well, um, I did get to the doctor today, and she seems to think it's bacterial. <laughs> oh, yeah, you might have to get. So that. I've uh, uh, so I've taken the first two antibiotic pills. <laughs> oh, she gave you some. Yeah. Oh, that's great news. Yeah. So else, uh, yeah. I'm ho I, I'm hoping to feel. I'm hoping that uh, gets me recovered for before the uh, mm -hmm. recan reason conference. So. <gasps> oh my gosh! You better hurry up. Yeah. Oh my gosh! You really need to make sure you get better. Okay. Yeah. So play as long as yeah. you feel, but don't. But um, you know, yeah. season three, okay. I guess I should do game number 52 or 53 or 53. Yeah. So uh, I hope you're still better. I'll see how I feel when we're about to start the actual trivia. Uh, and and I might just decide I'm too tired to. <laughs> you can around. just rush through and don't use your brain power too much. Just, you know, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I brought my popcorn. Hi, Bob. Hi. What's CDT? Central Daylight Time. Oh. Very We're cool. Daylight Time, right? It was just standard. It. Yeah, it's just a little. Today's Thursday. Friday. So the um, conference starts on Saturday, Jim, right? Yeah. Let's see, there's, oh, there's something, some sort of pub night on Friday night. Oh, well, uh, yeah, they're going to do something. You're going to be able to meet Richard Saunders. Yeah. I know he's there. She's been posting all day. Yeah. You're eating pancakes and stuff. Okay. So if this is episode 50 tonight, 51, 52. Yeah, 50, yeah. 160, 161. So 161. I should that would be the last game of our third year. <gasps> wow. Yeah. 162, I should do. Yeah. Oh, let's see. You, you missed one or two, but you had somebody else take over your spot. So yeah, we were at Psycon. Yeah. And it seems like there was another one. There was another, I had COVID and I wasn't feeling so great. So Rob ran it, but I was kind of, I think I was sitting and watching. And then there's another time I was traveling. Um, I was here. We we did briefly check in on the one from Psycon though. That is true. So theoretically we were here. I'm counting that as attending. <laughs> we didn't play, but. 90, 21, so the 25th of May, Carl, is that, is that to your, uh, what you think? Uh, let's see. That will be the first game of our fourth year. Let's see. 
that seems wrong because we we oh it just means it's fifty two games. It doesn't mean our anniversary is actually on. Our actual anniversary is June something, wasn't it? June one would be one episode one of season four. Let's see, so so the the twenty four the twenty fourth of May is the Queen's birthday, and if you don't give us a holiday, we'll all run away. Apparently What's our fourth year start? What day? June what one. Yeah. June one would be the beginning of year four. Well, if you think of it that way, but we've played it more games than once. I'm talking about the actual anniversary. Well, I mean, yeah. So the thing is, we we we'd have to figure out how many Saturday events we stuck in there. How about we just go with the anniversary day? Okay, what is the anniversary day? What was the first one? The first one was June eleventh. June eleventh. Look, there's Romero and Faith again. Ju Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Oh, it is Juneteenth. June eleventh. Oh. No, June nineteenth. So, yeah. Will we say the eighth or the fourteenth? Let's see. If I remember what I've heard right, uh, Juneteenth is June nineteenth, and that was the day that the. Uh, Slaves they were found, uh, freed by Union out. Order. And... Yeah, they found out they were emancipated. In Texas, yeah. they found out that they were free. Yeah, in Texas. So were, we would say the 15th, which is a Thursday. Aren't you guys having a skeptic talk or something there, Carl? Uh, in your place? St. Louis? On, Secular on Friday, Student Alliance. On, on Friday, June 2nd, we're having a skeptics in the pub with Katie Dyer. Okay. I'm not letting them schedule anything on Thursdays. Well, I have written the 15th, 16th, 17th is the secular secular student alliance thing in St. Louis. So Oh yeah, yeah. That, but that, that shouldn't have interfered with Thursday. No, I don't I won't be doing that anyway. First, well, I was hoping you might have um possibly have um the second event or a meetup or something with with uh, eric uh yeah i've already talked to eric uh, about that and that uh we're, we're going to uh defer and try and get kenny in at a later date okay but you're not gonna have we're... eric there uh or at least like a meet and greet he's not gonna do a lecture no the the the, the board really is skeptical of <laughs> being able to get people together in significant attendance for two events in the same month. Oh, come on now. Hey, look, I'm, I'm trying to push them to do something every month because in, in the current plan, it's doing something every other month and every other thing having a speaker. So right. I'm, I'm already pushing hard to get them to do one thing a month. <laughs> First trivia. But secretly pushing hard. If they yeah, watch support. the video, now they'll know it's my overt agenda. And mine too. You know, I was just thinking there's a senior sitter, senior sitter in our town, and Mark just joined it and he's going to be doing magic classes. And we were looking at the schedule, and oh my gosh, every day there's I mean, it's just this big room over there, but every day they have something scheduled like multiple things, like, oh, we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do this. And I and I wonder about it. You know, you got these other facilities that have you know, CFI Western New York and CFI West, and they should be doing mo many things there that day. Every day should have something happening or multiple times a day, a coffee meetup or a, a you know, meet and greet or a, a, a book club or a, or dancing skeptically or so. I don't know. It seems like every day there should be some kind of event happening. I'm sorry, I'm making a lot of noise. Let me mute myself. Carl just keeps changing his background. <laughs> it's all Carl tonight. Sorry, I muted myself because I was making a lot of noise because I was opening up my popcorn. And now, <laughs> why would we be disappointed right if a certain category or topic does not pop up? What, what? 
I won't be disappointed if a certain subject matter does not pop up. You'll be disappointed if uh, something doesn't pop up, huh? Mm -hmm. she, she is alluding to the fact that it's May the 4th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish mm -hmm. somebody a uh, happy May the, uh, May the 4th today. May the 4th be with you. Mm -hmm. Lots of stuff happening in the news. Oh, my God. No, let's not talk about it. Why? Let's Is it a good stuff? No. <laughs> not here. Not here. Well, gee, I guess, right. on, I, I guess on Saturday, the enthusiasts for the British royal family will have something to uh, pay attention to. I talked to uh, somebody in uh, Britain today, well, over Facebook, and he says, I'm in Spain avoiding all of the mess in London. And I thought, oh, that's right. You guys have a coordination. <laughs> I didn't even dawn on me, you know, I'm like, oh, that's this weekend. <laughs> yeah, coordination this weekend? Yeah, May 6th. It feels like it's constantly on because I've, I've not been here. paying attention to anything because. Well, apparently. It's in the every article. I'm I'm looking at the New York Times, the Washington Post, and every one of them, it's like there's an article. You're like, oh, oh, that's right, that's this weekend. So you never quite. Well, no, our that. lieutenant governor has made the front headline pages of CNN. So. Oh, is that what you're talking about? No, we're also talking about that. Um, well, we now have a. We had one Democrat decide to switch over and defect to the Republican side in our state legislator and so now the republicans have a veto proof majority and as of today you cannot get an abortion after 12 weeks they've enacted a ban so you know <laughs> I, you know faith yeah and, and and no abortion after 12 weeks makes you look very liberal compared to missouri mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but listen here's how i think of this i'm not gonna <laughs> this is not a popular opinion i'm sure we're recording this but I think it has to get really, really bad before it gets right. Because the reason why we're in the problems that we're in is because people don't pay attention, they don't vote. I so, don't think, but and the issue I have with that is, is like, what is how bad? Like we had almost a coup of our government. We had- it, Who knows? It, it's gonna have to get really, really bad. We don't know, we're not in charge. The, the danger of your position is if things get bad enough, it gets structured so the democratic process doesn't exist anymore, and there's no way to take control back short of a revolution. Well, I'm a Pollyanna, so I do not believe it will get I'm that bad. I'm a Pollyanna, bad. too. But... It will not get that bad. But look, I'm a I pragmatist, remember... and I don't necessarily agree with you. <laughs> okay, well, the 1970s um, where we had the lines with the gasoline and and just the, the just insanity of that, and that changed things when people, when there was a problem with gas, getting oil. It was like a new had the opportunity to throw out the filibuster and stack the Supreme Court. They passed. Listen. We've mm -hmm. got a six to three majority that's about ready to throw out the Chevron doctrine. If we can get I mean, what are they going to do? You They're going to not be rid of Clarence United Thomas. Back then. You didn't have Citizens United back then. You didn't have. People uh, got involved and they started getting, and, and then remember just a few years ago when gasoline got up to like $6 a gallon, at least it did in California. You know, it was a, it, what it did is it made people just go, what the fuck? And we really aggressively went to uh, um, start taking electric cars and hybrid cars seriously. It takes something really strong to get people to go, oh shit, I should probably vote. I should probably pay attention because that's the thing. People are all bitching and complaining, but they're not voting. If they, oops, if they, if they voted. They vote. 70 million people voted for Donald Trump in 20, uh, 2020. Right. But how many, what, something like 80 million or 78 million voted but against. But it still wasn't a huge substantial shift. And I think that's the, that's the problem is that you've got people that like talking about these abortion bans where they're coming in and saying, oh, well, like, cause there was a mother who for 13 weeks had to carry a baby she knew was going to die within a couple of hours of being born. And a religious fundamentalist was talking about, oh, how great it is you got to hold your child in their arms while they passed away. And she's like, that's Ew. not what I fucking wanted. No, yeah, absolutely. See, the thing is, is that nobody thought that Roe v. Wade was ever going to actually be overturned. We um, really didn't believe it. No, we didn't nobody. believe it. 
And so now people are going, we have to change this. More women will go into politics. More people are going to vote. More people are pissed. I think it's going to make a change. And we, okay, so let's just let it sit there because you guys don't agree with me. And I know I don't have a popular uh, opinion. So we'll see. We'll look on this in you're game you're number Gen X or boomer and game I'm game number four hundred and fifty <laughs> in a few years, and we'll say Susan was right or Susan was wrong. Mary uh, Trump was for Mary a second. Trump. I didn't think that was a real video footage of you, Terry. I thought that was a frozen image of your cat. Please <laughs> Mary, what were you right or wrong about? I just came in. Oh, I'll tell you, Matt. What, Rob? I you just watched it. I watched the video of Mary Trump. She was being interviewed on CNN or something like that. And and she was asked about, you know, she's really concerned. And I, I don't know how it came up initially, but the interviewer asked her, have you considered dual citizenship? So in case it gets as bad as you think it's going to, you can leave the country easily. She said, no, I haven't. But all of my friends, or maybe she said most of my friends who are in um, LGBT communities and are Jewish are, in fact, considering that now. Mm, that's just something to say. I don't think it's true. Is that Ryan? Actually, Ryan. Yeah. And listen, we're, not talking, we're not talking about what's true or not. We're talking about how worried people are. And she, well, that's good. Be worried. She, she follows the situation worried. very closely, as do her friends. You know what? So do we. I'm not worried. Uh, he's upstairs and I'm downstairs. So we, we're going to play on separate teams. Who? Okay. Who are, we, who are you talking about? Ryan. Hello. I'm going to make sure there's no collusion. <laughs> no, he's upstairs. Hi, Kyle. Hey, good evening. I enjoyed your pew. Uh, no, not pew. Um, Close. Um, the Gallup. other one. Gallup. There you go. You had a Gallup poll? I enjoyed it too. Hi, Carol Gallup. Carolyn. I'm going to be coming to see you pretty soon. Yes, you are. Oh, it was exciting. I was looking at. at uh, what the amazing things are to do in Lodi. <laughs> I gotta go get Ruby. There's time. Yeah, wine is, there's gotta be something. Uh, well, I'm, you don't do wine wineries. That's what we're famous for. Sorry. Oh. Um, well, we, we have fish here and artichokes and stuff. I don't do those either. We have artichokes too. Um, oh, yeah. I thought it'd be too hot for artichokes. We have almonds. We have asparagus, the Stockton Asparagus Festival. We have. Wait, why, why is Susan visiting you, Carolyn? Huh? Why is Susan visiting you? She's doing a workshop in Lodi. I'm going to go see her hobbit hole. Where's Lodi? It's in California. About an hour from Sacramento and San Francisco. Uh, are you eating milk beds, Susan? No, I'm eating popcorn. Okay. I do have my milk beds. It's in the Central Valley. I do have them. Hi, Ron. Isn't Lodi in northern New York or New Jersey, too? It's in New Northern New York. I have been to that one. Yes. Yeah, that's why I was confused because that's what I, I thought you were from the East Coast because you know your association with Kenny and he was in Philadelphia. So I didn't realize nope, you I were moved. a West Coast person. She's over here by me now. Oh, you moved. I, you, I, you used to live here. there. I'm from here. Lived in upstate New York for 22 years when I first got married, uh, and then retired. I said I never want to see another snowflake as long as I live, <laughs> and we moved back. She moved here. Hi, Jamie. Well, well you could have stayed here because I've been in New Jersey now this whole season and there was not one snowflake. So, okay. <laughs> global warming. Uh, uh, we had one warming. or two, I think. One or two? Yeah. Look I'm, in. An, Look I, I'm in the nice part of New Jersey. That's why. Oh. Uh, Alan is here. Oh, my God. This man has been freaking everywhere. Okay. I'm following you all over Italy. Have... I have to eat, so I'm 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 here, but I have to I have to eat. So you don't need to. Are you going to eat with David? Hmm? Uh, nah, you know, I, I, if you, I, I have a lot of friends say telling me that they're going to go to Italy and they're going to ask for referrals for uh, restaurants. You don't mm -hmm. want to ask me. You know, we I, I don't think we we had the best food in the world. So uh, you yeah. got to see so much, and you must have had a blast. Oh my gosh, your views and those photos and. It, it, was, it was great fun, but what you didn't see was the wheelchair, because um, uh, uh, Debbie was having some issues with her with her asthma when we were in Leipzig with Avi, and then when we got to Florence, 
the first hour, we hadn't been there more than an hour. She she missed missed a step on the curb, oh, straight into the oh, pavement. She oh, killed her shoulder. Oh we man! Ended up, we ended up we ended up the whole of Florence came came to our aid, but we we took an ambulance. We spent the the afternoon in the an emergency, and then I we rented a um, uh, a wheelchair. And if you've ever been there, it's all like these cobbly stones, and it's 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 really hard. But uh, but we ended up we got around so it was fine and by the time we got to Venice Venice would have been absolutely impossible with a wheelchair yeah. uh, Italy is not disabled friendly mm-hmm. and uh, uh, but we we had a great time and Venice is terrific I mean I, I, all three cities were great but Venice is just really pretty amazing I think I've seen little videos of people going around Venice and they and they've got these little bridges pedestrian they, bridges but they'll put you but they've got stairs up to the top yes they, there's there there's something like 400 bridges and, <clears throat> and uh i mean because it's it, the whole everything's islands it's all uh, all of yeah. venice's islands yeah. and so you so you have you can't go very far without having to go over a bridge and yeah it's all stairs you know? we, we we actually took a when we were in venice we got a boat from the airport directly to our hotel and then just had to Ooh. walk in but many, many people were walking with heavy luggage up and down those stairs. Oh yeah, you know yeah. every other like to get to find their hotel from wherever their boat dropped them off. It's like, oh my god! Wow. Yeah, that's exactly it. Now we we uh, we didn't have to schlep too much when we took the train there. So we just really had to schlep from the train to the uh, a short distance to our boat, and the boat took us right to the hotel. Um, actually it didn't, we did have to schlep across, uh, one of the squares a little bit, but going, going back to the airport, we had at 3 45 AM, we, oh, we had a, we had a water taxi waiting for us, right? Literally okay. right at our, um, at our, at our, the front of our, um, hotel and, um, you know, but but it's it really is pretty. But it's 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 such a cool place. It really is. So Venice, I heard, was having a lot of problems with tourism. You know, and that it's you know just very bad shape and overcrowded. You know, well, it's picture. crowded like crazy. Oh. It, and and this isn't even high season. Although I think it was some it was some uh, uh, I think Italian uh, a holiday or something. But yeah, it's it's like wall to wall people. Uh, but it's it, it's you know you can get away from some of the people and it's just so weird and I'll tell you what if anybody tells you don't use your GPS don't listen to them the GPS is a lifesaver if I didn't use my GPS I'd still be in 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 uh, Venice <laughs> trying to find my hotel. <clears throat> so Sorry, so uh, but I really enjoyed your adventure that was so fun. <laughs> Facebook is amazing. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I should have told you about the best deal in Venice. The, What's that? The, in Venice, the best deal in Venice is the Naval Museum. It was like when I was there, it was like two, like a euro fifty, and you had, then you could use the bathrooms in there for free, which was cheaper than the bathroom passes for the public toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so Carl would be so practical. You needed so to use was the restroom, this... it was cheaper to go to the Naval Museum than to pay for a public toilet. Yeah. So, so is this Naval but, Museum sort of the Navy of? Uh, Venice going back many centuries. No, it's all yeah. about belly buttons. Yes. <laughs> well, you did see David. Well, that thing looked I thought, massive. I thought, I thought it might be sort of the re- more recent stuff where uh, where it was the Italian Navy or something too. But it's a little of both. Was it really, really big, Alan? When you saw it, I mean, we could see you standing there, but it. Which the David? Yeah, the David. Be more specific uh, about what you mean. <laughs> his, hands, his hands were big. How, how big would a hand be? <laughs> What's that? How big would a hand be? Well, I don't know. I mean, the, the, the statue's got to be 12 feet, at least 12 feet or something. I I think we had, didn't we have a trivia question? Yeah, yeah we, we had, had a trivia there. question. Maybe a trivia question bigger than I thought. It was like 12 to 17 feet. feet. 17 it was on that huge podium, okay. so it's hard to say. They, they practically slapped the, the camera out of my hand when I tried to take a picture. Well, it's really interesting. They tell us, because we asked about that. See, I think now at, at all these museums, because everybody's taking pictures with their phones and without a flash, 
it was the flash that was always the problem. So yeah. uh, because we're not using flashes, they they have no problem with you taking pictures. Now, so they, they've they've softened it because that was not the reason. It was just you could not. I said I said I don't have a flash. I'll shut it off. No, can't take a picture. They want because well, they don't want you. They don't want you to copy them. They wanted you to buy the postcards and right, whatever. Right, the postcards. The yeah, it was obnoxious. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Peggy. Hey. Amen. Bona sera. Bona right, sera. I'll, I'll be back. I got to eat. Yeah, go eat. Bon so, Jerry. Peggy, Bon's I heard so you have a you had an anniversary. It's so sad. What a beautiful. No, it was spot. it was a good memory. It was a good memory. It was just us on the beach. That was a good memory. She's talking about her previous previous puppy. Yeah. Body dog looked just like something from the Monopoly game. Yeah, he was a Monopoly dog. He was a great little Frankie, but you know, we all have our favorites. Aww. Speaking, somebody didn't like that. So, <laughs> so, so the dog had a Monopoly on your heart? Oh, I don't think she heard it. She's groaning right now. <laughs> George is objecting to my having stated that I had a favorite dog. <laughs> Peggy, did you hear what Jim said? No, I couldn't hear anything. Say it again, Jim. So the dog had a monopoly on your heart? Definitely, definitely. Oh. <laughs> but you know, we all have our pets and they all do that, so. Yeah. Hi, Terry, how are you? Even chickens. I'm good. That's good to see your cats playing tonight. Yeah. That'll yeah. be good. Get the right but, answers. But Peggy, if you get mad at you're a dog, you can't eat it. I know I, I, we're a chicken's different. <laughs> well, that is true now, Rob. <laughs> Bob, Hi, James. Don't listen. You moved to China. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. I could eat it somewhere. <laughs> Hopefully, Jane, I'm being tempted to go up to Oregon in, in August when Janine is gonna have this huge party. That she's that's getting bigger and bigger every time she mm. that's yeah. how it always is she goes oh we're gonna monster. we're just gonna have like one person talk oh really and then maybe someone so should give a talk you know maybe we should put together a skeptic camp you know why don't we just have a big party why don't we just... <laughs> it just keeps happening to her i'm thinking of coming up there love that's to have funny. you she's clean it she's you can tell she's nesting she's uh, fussing all over her deck and getting it all cleaned up and just you're like okay Janine we're all coming up there that'd be fun all righty almost there <clears throat> I have to start dividing you guys up look at Vincent's here it says Vincent are you all excited about your um weekend is the sky blue <laughs> Depends what time of day. Yeah. And the cloud cover. <laughs> is that it both is. Catholic? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, Vincent, I I seem I think you said you'd be okay with uh uh carpooling me and uh and yeah. So, yeah. Uh now I noticed, gee, I don't seem to have your your phone number on uh my eight six seven five three oh nine. <laughs> no. no Wait, that's, Jenny. that's Jenny. Oh, Ginny. Oh, Ginny and Vincent, I get it mixed up. Yeah. So text each other or whatever. You don't want to put it on, on our massive channel here. Oh. Because everybody will know and we'll yeah, well, go around um, the world. Yeah, well, I'm not going to be able to text him if I uh, uh, if I don't have his phone number. Well, use the chat. Use the... Write it on a piece of paper and hold it up to your camera. <laughs> oh, good. Paul is here. Oh. What's your face? This is a perfect use case for private public encryption. <laughs> that sounds good peggy's got her her uh star wars stuff on yeah, let's see somewhere down there vincent there it is hey i want you to know that uh, vincent after last week i i re-listened to the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy the first the first one did you yeah and it didn't start where we said it started radio, it started radio with radio a woman partner? sitting and she had this great epiphany and the, uh, about how the world would actually be a better place and then the world ended that was a different Brilliant. that was that was a different book no no that's the beginning of the of the book uh in the, yeah yeah yeah, 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 uh, yeah if if i remember right that uh uh 
uh, and then uh, this this uh, radio play slash book slash TV show is not a, is not her story. And then several books later, it is her, uh, it, yeah, it does tell it her story. It, well, it, it the, doesn't mention her. It just mentions her, and then it doesn't talk to her about her again. Yeah. It picks, well, it, she comes up in a later book, like the third book or fourth yeah. book. Yeah. Who's the her? Um, the, it's not Trillian. It's somebody else. It, her mm. name is Fenchurch. Oh yeah, uh, Fenchurch. And she and oh, she yeah. and Arthur gets involved. Is it so? In does she book. in the if if you looked at the very beginning of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and I didn't look, I was listening to the audio book. It was being read over YouTube. The, the she's just is, mentioned and they don't even say her name yeah the the first 13 episodes on the radio were first yeah and the radio oh. episode starts the way it is but now when he changed when he adapted them to books he changed the structure and did yeah. that you know he added little things in here because he had more space or whatever right. but, but yeah that, what yeah, i he heard her up again. what i heard was them reading the book so what I heard yeah, was not the radio the drama, it was the book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you were listening to the audio book, but the, the audio the book, yeah. form was a was um a, a, a radio play. Episodes. I heard yes. I heard that way back when something like the late 1970s. Oh yeah, I I I take I uh taped it on cassette. I was so excited <laughs> when it came on public. Yeah, I have I had for a long time I had cassettes that I had made of the of the original. 13 episodes i think i bought that on cassette and i still have I ha it I think my, I have. Uh, entertainment okay. center and i have nothing i can play it on well what i did is i turned them to mp4 mp3s so i have them probably somewhere on my computer oh by the way hi gail gail you were mentioned in one of the videos we just did i don't know if you saw it or not um the skeptical inquire um no center for inquiry one the video on how to have virtual and conferences uh, virtual and in-person conferences best practices oh you got mentioned about them uh towards three-fourths in you were talking about how you know people had when i'd asked on facebook what people thought of virtual and in hybrid and you were saying you know that you guys felt like second class citizens and blah 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 blah, blah. that was all gail 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 well, i mentioned you so i thought oh okay i forgot to, uh, to tag you to say that you're on there, but you're on there. We were I'm, gonna, I'm going to be giving a virtual talk for the National Capital Area Skeptics in a week or so. Oh, really? And, and it is going to be a dual format, so I have no idea if they're going to do it well or screw it up. Well, I don't know if they've even watched the video. Probably I not. shared it with everybody on how to do a better... Well, anyway. So, hi, Kevin. Hi, everybody. Things are stirring <laughs> up in our in our psychic world there, huh, Kevin? <laughs> yep. Yeah, Rob, oh, do you get to decide who the people are you interview when you do those interviews? Yeah. Do you have any? We, I'll tell you something we desperately need. I put some of it on the, the GSOW website, but I'm. you started with that one about the transpersonal psychology, and I have been doing extensive research, and sadly, in fact, very sadly, I cannot find anything that is critical. I can make the criticisms, but I can't use that. Right. And the people who are critical are other people who are saying that the other transpersonal psychologists aren't doing something they think they should be. Mm. Not that there's something wrong with this whole concept. Right. And Interesting. The, if I look at the places where they're talking about it, and I mean, I'm a psychologist, and I used to belong to the American Psychological Association, and and the and the, and the American uh, 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 Psychological Association for Science. And that one in the science website, I did extensive searches and I can find absolutely nothing about it whatsoever. Recording. So I said, he says, why are you still here? Why, why aren't you in a room? <laughs> I go, oh, that's right, I'm in a room. A whole night. All right. Well, what, what do you guys? I don't know what happens in these rooms most of the time. So, what are we talking about? <laughs> well, we were just talking about what's going on in the news. I was saying I've been working late hours all all week, and I'm kind of, kind of, you know, out of it. So, um, Kyle's giving us a rundown. What's <laughs> happening? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's a big newsy week, right? 
So what do we pick for the topic or name? Name. Clarence I haven't gotten Thomas. that far yet. Oh, Clarence Thomas thing. That's get our own billionaire. We need our own billionaire to pay for. I'm no good. Um, at what do you got, Ryan? Uh, yeah, that's. I was hearing about that earlier with it's his nephew who he raised as a son's tuition to private school over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The billionaire paid for his his uh, the kid he was raising as his son. Yeah. How about yes. coupon code Clarence Thomas at checkout? <laughs> oh, I like something like that. Say it again. Coupon, use coupon code Clarence Thomas at checkout. Uh, it's great. Or the billionaire's name. Which oh, one? yeah. I don't know who it is. We can put that in too. What's the Where billionaire's is? name? I don't know. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I'm, I got to put Janine in her room. Let's see. What about uh, Give her to us. No, I put her in room five because that's where the next one they go. So what is Clarence? Okay, Clarence Thomas, billionaire, friend, Harlan Crow. This Even <laughs> sounds like a villain. That's a great, I was just yeah. going to say, that's a great name for a villain. <laughs> I, I, like, I like it. So Harlan how about Crow. how about that? Use... Use what was it you said, Kyle? Use coupon code Harlan Crow at checkout for 150k <laughs> off. I like it. That's good. Okay, Kyle, you get to say it. I like uh, it. A lot. That requires spelling. I'll say it, but somebody's got to. It's type Harlan H A R L A N, and his last name is Crow, like a crow. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Or you don't even just say use. I use, got it. Use coupon code. Coupon code Harlan Crow at, um, for discount at checkout. Is, yeah. like Harlan Crow at checkout for 150. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm no good at these things. I only know when I hear something I like. That's a good Awful book. at coming up with these things. So there's no depth to uh, the corruption of Clarence Thomas, is there? And there's no way they're going to get him out of there because they're, they're, you know, I'm saying to myself, okay. They've just got to make him go. But if they make him go, then Gorsic is also having, is it Gorsic? What's the other one's name? But I, I is, no, Alito. Alito? Uh -huh, Which one? They caught one. him in something else. They caught him in um, some scandal of, I don't know. And then John Roberts' wife, there's a scandal again on her. She's out, you know, uh, uh, what is it called? Hunting, uh, head hunting for her law firm and she's been making all this money millions and millions and wow. so uh, there's no way they're going to get clarence thomas out because that might lead to the others going and not in not as close as i mean the republicans would have to agree and the republicans are not going to agree to take clarence thomas out no and he's not going to voluntarily go well you know he came in there with with a, a lot of a huge cloud over his head with the oh, hill. Hill. Mm -hmm. well i remember that do you remember it jane i do i remember watching the hearings i remember something about a coke can and there was a pubic yes. can yes <laughs> what the hell is that? He's, a, he's a piece of you know ah uh. I was just time? barely old enough to remember that in fact that's the, the moment i realized how conservative my mother was i was in fifth grade and my teacher said, oh, I believe Anita Hill. And my mother was like, why did she wait so long to bring it up? Yes, that was the thing. <laughs> well, we thought that. We all thought that. I mean, you know, rape only happens whenever a person jumps out of from under a bush or whatever and puts right. a knife in your throat. We didn't know any of that stuff. That was all new. Ryan's right. too young. Ryan, you don't remember it. I, well. I, I was in grade school. And, uh, and I think dad was just running like, c-span in the background for for days when it was happening and that's the same, same thing with the whole coke can and you're just going like what you know at, at like 11 or 12 you're just like what is this what even you know and then Kyle walks in here and goes what's this about a coke can <laughs> it only gets better from there well and then the, <laughs> other, the other thing about like the whole why did anita 
wait to talk it's like well he wasn't being nominated for the supreme court you know that's like right. Point, yeah that's right but she did, a lot, she did a lot to educate the public about the way sexual harassment works and a way the way you know people women can't come forward they'll lose their jobs i, I believed her um but a lot of people you know struggled with that question you know, why did she wait? You know, we don't understand this. I mean, it's a good point. There's lots of people I know a lot of things about that I'm not going to the press and saying, hey, hey, but if that person right. were nominated for the Supreme Court or some sure. really high federal office, you That's could, right. I would definitely come out and say, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Her whole a psychopath, a serial sexual harasser, mm -hmm. an embezzler. Come on, we can't. Right. Carl's keeping the goods. So if you're running for any kind of office of any kind, make sure you take Carl out first. That's right. Before he has a chance to leak it. Well, it's true. We used to have sexual harassment, tra sexual sexual harassment training at my work, and I had to do it. And it was always the same freaking video over and over. And I hated it. So I'd always start off everyone that came in there all because I only hired women almost almost only. That's all that we had that would apply and. Um, I would talk to him about, I say, a long time ago, there was this man called Clarence Thomas and this woman who worked for him named Anita Hill. And because of the, the what happened, we get to watch this video. <laughs> you know, I, I, I used to think a lot of the, the, those HR training videos for sexual harassment were unrealistically over the top until I worked for someone that made those videos look extremely tame and understated. Huh. <laughs> amazing it's just amazing with the stuff that you would see even after i mean in modern days like right now not stuff they've uncovered from the past but people are doing today in some right. of the more liberal areas I, I i i my eyes pop out it's like how can you be that stupid like yeah all, all the all the training videos they ever showed me were always the subtle stuff of the inappropriate hand touches and stuff like none of them had the you sleep with me or you're fired but i witnessed that kind of thing happen really oh, yes carl how many did you have to sleep with before you not me <laughs> <laughs> did you get fired for that is no. that why you're retired no he's like i'm going to another he refused. <laughs> that's why he's not right. working right now i refuse to have my standards sell, <laughs> sell my sell myself that way but anyway so that was that was I mean, that was a whole, well, I don't know, you guys, oh, well, Jane isn't because she's busy, but are you guys not watching the Masterson, um, Danny Masterson trial right now? It's, it's the second time because the first one was a, was a, a, um, a mistrial. mistrial. Yeah, and we, this one, I watched the mistrial, like I never missed, uh, the first one, I didn't miss anything. Even it was happening at PsyCon and I'd go out on my break and I'd be like looking to see what's going on. I felt followed everything. So now it's on again and it is even more graphic and it is over the top oh my god the things that happened to these women and it's all tied to scientology if you don't know that it's oh. he's a scientologist and scientology is like completely behind danny masterson and they've got three women she's just given her testimony the third woman gave her testimony today it's scathing scathing the the graphicness that's going on and and so he's for sure guilty right Oh, of course he's yeah. guilty. I haven't yeah. followed it. That's yeah. just what I, yeah. yeah, he's for sure guilty, but the, he got a mistrial last time. And so we don't know what might happen this time. Um, they didn't put Scientology on the K, on the trial much in the first trial. This one, they're really leaning into Scientology and explaining. Here comes Deborah. And so that was kind of how, you know, we didn't know. And so... Uh, it's been really interesting to talk about rape and women who waited. These are women who 30, 20, 30 years later, but Scientology has a policy. You're not allowed to say the word rape and you're not yeah. allowed to report anything to the police. And, and they make you know. sign weird stuff. And they yeah, got that thing. you can't right? sue. And it's illegal to sue. They and get you to admit to a whole bunch of stuff that, that, that they, they, they have, can, they can hold that against you. They can also do that too. Ever, yeah. Yeah, there it's needs to awful. be something about like coercion and statute of limitations. I don't know how that works out, but that's what's, you know, a, a, at, at play yeah. here. Yeah. Okay, I'm putting Deborah in room two. All right, so when do you want to close the rooms? Carl, you decide. Right now. Okay. No, two minutes Two minutes from now. So um, that was exciting. So the Danny Masterson trial is going really well. I've been watching the 
Lori Daybell, which is another, it's another kind of attack on Mormonism. I mean, so, mm. so I think that a lot of cases are coming up right now in courts and stuff that are reflecting badly on things that we'd like to have things reflected badly on, like Mormonism and religion. And then the other one is, um, they just had the Proud Boys. Proud Boys. Yeah. Yep. It's they like, got them. Yeah. Oh, it feels good. I want so badly to feel some 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 things are gonna happen to some people this year. 2023 has got to be our year to feel like there's some justice. The plan is Trump will mount no defense in the E. Jean Carroll case. Yeah, I heard that. Oh, I've been following that too. Isn't that exciting? I mean, that's it like, really wow. is exciting, yeah. He's in Scotland opening up another golf course or something. Oh no. Yeah, Do they said that they got rid of him. Treaty or no? Uh? Do we have extradition with Scotland? <laughs> I mean, this is a civil case. He can't he can't face know, anything but money. Well, you know, it, it's it's an interesting tactic, him mounting no defense, because he could, you know, he's certainly gonna spin this something like the, the whole system was rigged, therefore I chose not to play the game. Yeah. But the yeah. jury's gonna and take that into consideration. Because right. You know, and I don't they, I don't understand because she's and then the has the for NFTs and other things. That'll come next. There, so she has the dress that she he raped her in, and she never cleaned it. She put it back in her closet in a oh, plastic. Oh, that's great. Thing. That's but the great. thing is, is she took it out and she wore it for uh, like Vogue or something for a magazine cover, and then put it back. But there, there's got to be DNA on there somewhere. Yeah. Oh yeah. But but the thing is, is they're not allowing that in. I don't know why, but I did hear them say something in one of the document things that was really important. So I'll finish. So they said in some court documents or something I was reading, they said we will not be going into the DNA evidence or mentioning it at all. So I don't know. So they so I don't know if they don't have DNA or they do have DNA and they and it wasn't allowed to be in. But that would be like that would be like the end of him if if they have DNA. I did hear a little about that on a legal podcast that was talking about E. Jean Carroll. That Trump was refusing to take a DNA test that they could use to compare it to the dress sample. Oh. And he, he refused and he refused. And then finally, like at the last minute, like weeks before stuff was supposed to start, they said, oh, okay, well, we're willing to do the test. But if they had done that, it would have like shifted the whole schedule back months because then there would have been, they would have had to have chances to get experts to look at things and reanalyze it. It would have like thrown the whole schedule off like six months. And the defense just, I mean, the prosecution, I think, just said, you know what? We don't need it. Never mind. We're not delaying this case by you suddenly now taking a DNA test that then we can go through 15 motions about the accuracy of it before we ever get to trial. They said, Mary well, Trump would have given her DNA. Forward. They should have asked Mary Trump. She would have given oh, her yeah. DNA. There's <laughs> lots of ways to get DNA samples that don't involve having the person give them. Yeah, yeah. they didn't. Yeah, need but are they admissible? Get it off of all yeah. kinds of stuff. Hello, Deborah. They, they, hello there. They may mm -hmm. not be usable in court. Well, I don't know what ended up happening, but I, I would like uh, to know. Yeah. Did you get it off right chicken? <laughs> you, get chicken you can get chicken DNA. <laughs> yeah, get it off the bucket. Look, Paula's here. Look, Paula's off here. The bucket, off the I'm bucket. so excited. Paula's kind of on the other side of the TV screen. We can sort of see her. You were well, driving to here. room five. You had to know when I was here. I knew you were here, but you're here now. I can see you. Before you came into the room, I just sent you off to room. So There we go. Where'd she go? <laughs> oh, she disappeared, the little snot. Okay. I mean, you, say you can see her. All you really see of her is the top oh, of her head. But yeah. yeah. There, I can see her. There we go. If, if we twist those go. knobs, will she go up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like an etch a sketch. Uh, that's bordering on sexual harassment. Yeah, I know. I know. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, Paula, that's I, sexual I, harassment I, training I, for you. Oh, no, it's horizontal should... hold, the old TV set. I think you should She'll make a turn stop, sideways I, like this. Stop motion, I've taken many stop motion hours character of, for yourself. And uh, I've taken many out. hours of, of sexual harassment training, and I'm getting really good at it. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. So welcome back to we're game 159, season <clears throat> three, episode 50. Let's get your game, your, your names. All night, it's going to be Carl. Carl, all night. I hope you guys can handle that. I had to be put in a room, which is going to be kind of fun, but it's kind of sad because I really like to go from room to room and meet you guys and talk to you each individually, but 
you know. Can Carl handle us? That's the question. Yeah, I don't know. I think I, he put I, up with this pretty I think so. Oh, I okay. forgot. It's not. We're making our name hard to say, and it's Carl, not Susan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we don't have, have to try to pronounce it. Okay, room number one: Ben, Faith, Romero, and Jamie. What's your title? What's your name? Let Qui Gon's be Qui Gon's. Oh, <laughs> did you put it in the chat? <laughs> oh, I ain't gonna okay. spell it. There you go. Why What's not? What's a Qui Gon? Is that a is that a May the Fourth reference? Yes, it yes. is. Okay. Uh, I guess you, I guess that's sort of clever. Qui Gon. All right. Jim. Bob, I, Carolyn, Jim, Ron, and now Deborah. I don't know if Deborah got there in time. Just in yeah. time, but she missed the name. Five pensive hours for Jack Smith. Ooh. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Okay, I like that. Jane, Kyle. Ryan and me. What did what did we pick? We are use coupon code Harlan Crow at checkout for 150k off. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll keep up with that. Next I break. don't get that. You don't? You don't? Oh, Supreme uh, Court humor. He's been on yeah. vacation. He's a billionaire that's paying that's buying everything for uh Clarence. Oh, that's the guy's name. Um, yeah, and saying. and he also paid a hundred. And they just announced the day that he. He paid one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for Clarence Thomas's grand nephew, grand nephew who, who he's raised as his son to go to private schools. Harlan's, private middle, schools. Harlan's middle name wouldn't be Jim, would it? <laughs> Harlan Jim. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Not with his friend as Clarence Thomas, but uh, I don't know. well, he bought a More boat like, for Clarence Thomas, and the boat's name not a bribe. More like Adolf. <laughs> They yeah, did I say, I did hear in MSNBC, they were talking about it today, and they kept saying that Harlan Crow owns Clarence Thomas. And it's just like, ooh, that, that feels so awful yeah. hearing him say that about yeah, a black man. <laughs> but it's true. He owns him. Maybe he's he can black man. TPM called Clarence Thomas his uh, sh sugar judge. <laughs> yeah. Sugar judge. Sugar judge. Okay. Alan, Gil, Evan, and Vincent. What's your name tonight? Okay. Uh, it is. Sounds like he's opening an envelope to see what it is. And the winner is. It's this Doritos. <laughs> oh, Doritos. Say it. <laughs> I don't think I can. It's face done. May, May the, the fourth leads to this. Leads to Sith faced on, on the, the fifth. fifth sith face may the fourth <laughs> leads to sith face on the fifth you mean <laughs> lead, leads to being sith face maybe i don't get it or being ship faced is that what i think i think sith face, but sith works. face is a reference to the star wars, wars. and the fifth yeah. is a reference i to think if you stick the word being on. in there it would make more sense yeah. to being shift faced on the fifth yes Leads to beings sit based on the fifth. And the fifth is clever for its own good. May fifth. May fifth. Okay, we have to explain it. It's May the fourth. Let's get sis faced on the fifth. <laughs> I like that too. But by the time That's this night's one. over, it will be the fifth. Uh, only in your us. area, some here. people it already it's is. A it's a fifth here. Yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, here's Karen. Okay, Peggy, Rob, Terry, Paula, and Janine. Ruled me in before then. This is Met Gala. Cockroach is greater than Trump. We had it. We had a discussion about which theme to use, and it was the Met Gala cockroach. And then we were talking about the Trump and the trial and the whole, you know, all that stuff. And we just decided that the cockroach was better than Trump. Always, <laughs> always, always, <laughs> and forever. Okay, so here comes Karen. Karen, you there? Here comes the judge. I'm here. here. I'm here. Okay, I'm going to read off the names, and you're going to tell me which room you want to be in. This is becoming a <laughs> thing with Karen, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, Before Karen, you ready? Late. Oh, we lost her, I think. No, she's coming. There she is. There she is. Okay, all right. So nobody say anything to Karen. Don't text her either. All right, Karen. Let Qui-Gons be Qui-Gons. Oh, that's room one. Room two is five pensive hours for Jack Smith. Room three is use coupon code Harlan Crow at checkout for $150,000 off versus 
May the fourth leads to being Sith faced on the fifth. And then last one is meet Gala Cockroach. Oh, met Gala Cockroach is greater than Trump. Yeah, that's an acronym, right? That is M-E-T capitals. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it's definitely number four or five, and I say four. Okay. Yay. How are you, Kevin and Vincent and Karen? Good. That's <laughs> fun that you Welcome. get to choose your own name based on the name. I mean, choose which team you want to be in which, based on the name. Kevin okay. is, I mean, uh, Carl is running everything tonight. So he's not on any team. Yep. All he's right. On team, team Carl. Team Carl. <laughs> A night of movies and television apparently is our not the whole night, is it? Yes, it is the whole night. Oh well, I guess I'm not gonna be <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know TV the movies, maybe you can have fun with your team anyway. I, I All right. We will. We Sorry, will. Forced, you're forced you're forced to have team. On. So is there One different themes on each of these? May pay yeah. off. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. Round one. Great movie put downs and slams, volume one. Name the movie the put down is from. And in, in a, a one or two of these, there may be some language. Just a, just a trigger warning. I hope so. <laughs> okay, number one. What you have just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Whoa. That's a little put in my place. <laughs> Number two. Does Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? <laughs> Number three. Your father was a hamster, and your... Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. <laughs> Number four, you are a sad, strange little man and you have my pity. Number five, you dense, irritating, miniature beast of burden. I'm gonna get another long one coming here. Copy the whole thing. Oh, you English are so superior, aren't you? Or would you like to know where you'd be without us, the good old US of A to protect you? I'll tell you, the smallest fucking province in the Russian empire, that's where. So don't call me stupid lady, just thank me. If it wasn't for us, you'd all be speaking German, thinking Deutschland, Deutschland, uber alles. Wow. Number seven. I'd like Frank Shirley, my boss right here tonight. I want to tell him what a cheap, lying, no good, rotten, poor flushing, low life, snake licking, dirt eating, inbred, overstuffed, ignorant, blood sucking, dog kissing, brainless, dickless, hopeless, heartless, fat ass, bug eyed, stiff legged, spotty limp, lipped, warp headed sack of monkey shit he is. There goes our rating, our, our uh, <laughs> 13 rating. Demonetized. <laughs> Number eight, woman. How do you write women so well, man? I think of a man and I take away reason and accountability. Number nine, I crap bigger than you. Ooh. And lastly, wow. number 10, man to woman. Hey, have you ever been mistaken for a woman? Woman to man. No, have you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <sighs> Go forth. <laughs> get it. I get it. Karen's in room four, right? Yes. Three. Okay. Yes, room four. Oh, I got to go to my room. I have a room now. So I think iPad is the one that might have some trouble. Okay. Um, oh, so wait. I I guess I can put them on my screen and share it. Just give me a minute to set that up. I have a home. <laughs> oh, let me do that. All right. So I know some of these. I know two. Oh, right. Good. I know three. You should see my screen then. Yeah. Okay. I know two. Of them. Do you want to go one at a time? Let's start sure. at one. Yeah. No idea. Number oh, wait, one is on. Billy Madison. 
Oh, shoot. That's one of them I knew. <laughs> Is that the name of a movie? Yeah. yeah, yeah it's uh, it's Adam a Sandler. Never heard of it. How about two? No idea. I don't know this one. I know three. Well, yeah, everyone yeah. knows three. <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Or... Mm. Yeah, that's very familiar, but it's not, I don't know. I have a guess on on uh, number five, but it's just a guess. Let's start there. Shrek. Could be. Shrek speaking to uh, the donkey. Oh, yeah. You know, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. I, I think that's, the donkey. Oh, yeah, that I think that's really it. Good. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I think I've seen six, but I don't know what it is. I think it's one of the Monty Python, not Monty Python, but like um, Black Adder or something like that. Or, um, but he wouldn't be. He wouldn't be in Black. Adder. Oh, here I got to put some people in rooms. Hold on a second. Kevin goes to room four. It's been a while since I've seen it, so this is just a guess. But is it uh, Doctor Strange Love? Let's put that while we're waiting on something else. Yeah, that could that could, could sound be. like it. Yeah, I've only seen it once. It was really terrific, but I didn't see. Everybody knows Seven, right? Yeah. No. Is, that, is that Airplane or no National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? Oh, okay. No, I'm not up on my National. I felt like it was a National Lampoon but I didn't know which one. So that's, that makes me happy. Uh, number eight is Jack Nicholson. And as good as it gets. gets. Yeah, thank you. I could we not all, think of the We title. all know the same one. <laughs> see him saying the line. Yeah. Okay, I don't know nine or 10. 10, I know. What's nine? He knows 10. <laughs> 10 is Aliens. Nice. Well, the second one? Yep. Well, we need to do better than this, you guys. I don't even recognize the other ones, so I don't think I'm going to pull them out. Okay, let's see. Six, we think, is Dr. Strangelove. Well, it's just a guess based on the, the, the context. But it's a good one. Crap, they Does Barry Monolo know that you read his wardrobe? That is a dated joke. Yeah. It sounds familiar, though. Is that like, um, that kid, um, like one of those teen movies. Saying like back in the, uh, like the eighties. Yeah. So, better off dead. Sixteen candles. Uh, John Adventure in Nerds. Yeah. Can you picture an actor saying yeah, that? Like Judd Nelson, um, like the um, oh. the Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club? I don't know. Start there. I could, that, you know? the, I could see him saying it to the principal, maybe. Yeah. And it's like yeah, not quite yeah. funny enough, so it fits that, with the Rex Club, yeah. That guy, that teacher, that um, that guy that comes in. To yeah, the, the principal. Is he the principal? Yeah. Yep. Because that's the. I yeah. haven't seen that forever. I know. I don't know if I want to watch it again because it was such a good movie for the time. I was um, probably in my twenties, so I wasn't like the right age. But we're. I bet the nostalgia is still there. I don't know. I probably look at it now and go, "Oh God, this is awful." But we're watching, I want to think of it as a wonderful thing. You're we're watching. Strange. We're watching the the '94 miniseries of the of the Stand, 
And I totally forgot that Molly Ringwald's in it. And and I I haven't seen Molly Ringwald in years. And I just think Molly Ringwald is great. I still I still really like her. <laughs> I've never seen this fan. I've never even I think I've heard of it. You are a strange little man and you have my pity. I feel like it's about Danny DeVito. I don't know why. Taxi? Sure. Is it wait, this are movies though, isn't it? They, yeah. they all are so far. Um, could be uh throw mama from the train. He was in that. Hey, yeah, that's a that good was, guess. Oh no, don't go there. <laughs> I just threw that, that out. That is a good guess. Unless we have something better. That could be a Billy Crystalline, yeah. Yeah, I think so. And I didn't, I think I saw it once. Yeah, I did. That's a good one. It's but it's good... ages. Do we yeah. have everything? Is something done for everything? No, not possible. We missed at least one here. Nine. Cra- what, Jurassic Park? Maybe. No. Is there humor in that? <laughs> well, I did yeah, the big scene where they find the giant Jurassic Park dump. That's the only. Uh... No. How's everybody doing, Carl? We have one to go. Oh, here comes Robin. Well, Robin's here. I'm going to set her and uh, go back and talk to her so that because I'll give her to the team that has the most because we're about done. Oh. You, you, you could throw her into a room that needs a person because there might be a team that just has one question they can't get. Robin might know the answer. Um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. It would be ours. Bring her in. All right, let's get him. Okay, where is she? Maybe she knows number nine. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna say that. Maybe one of your other answers is wrong. Who knows? At this point, is it is it movies and film? Is it movies and film for all the categories? Or TV and film? TV and film, I think so. Every category is movie or TV related tonight. Hi, Robin. You're on our team. So for each category, it's one or the other? Correct. Okay, Okay. Okay. Robin, we have a question for you before Carl hits the button to go. We've got all the answers. We'll let you look at them in a minute, but we really need the answer to this. It was an insult in a movie, and the insult is, I crap bigger than you. Hmm. Do you know the movie? All right, uh, she's going. We're I'm going to ask my husband, though. Honey, have you ever heard the line in a movie, I crap bigger than you? No. <laughs> I, the, the one we guessed. He didn't um, even think about strange it. Strange Love. Run the, the Strange Love one by her, because that was a guess. So we have a couple of guesses. You may want to review if you can see my shared screen. We're pretty confident about Billy Madison, but not about The Breakfast Club or several others. So number two, try that one first, Robin. Number two, that sounds good. I, I got that one. Okay. Three is for sure right. Four. four. We don't know. I like I like four. Okay. Um, six I is one we guessed on. Okay. <laughs> I like that. She's just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, number six is not Doctor Strange Love. It's it's definitely um. A Monty Python thing. Oh, oh. no, no, it's um oh it's a, a fish called Wanda. Hey, Thank oh, you. good for you. you See, she was me. helpful. There it is. She justified being here. <laughs> I saw that, but um, it does sound like something from that those people. That's a great movie. I only heard it's it, I only watched movie. it once, but it was good, huh? Very good. I can't remember it now. Yeah, it makes me want to watch it again. It Let's do it I now. Can. Let's watch it. it. Let's do. <laughs> I crap bigger than you. Sounds like something that um uh who was the guy who was a taxi driver? Uh uh Robert De Niro. It sounds like a De Niro line. <laughs> sounds like something Robert De Niro's character would say. I could see that for sure. Could it be from The Godfather? Like Meet the Parents? Not not the Godfather. I didn't meet see the Meet the Parents. parents. Yeah, it's definitely a comedy line. Yeah. Bye, Carly. Good. Um, I think number 10 is Victor Victoria. No, it's aliens. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. 
For sure. I will defend sure. that one with my life. Okay. Ooh, ooh, Wait. Ryan, we have that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I I know the scene. I know who the. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's go with um, Meet the Parents, I guess. I didn't see it, so I don't know. It sounds more like something like Moonstruck or. Um, I have a needy dog here. I have a dog sitting for my niece. <laughs> and her dog is. This is. I'll show you. Yay. Oops, yeah. Oh, I'm shy about it too. Scared by something. <laughs> What's the puppy's name? Howley boy. Howley boy. Howley boy, like Hawaiian Howley. Aww. It looks like a very nice dog. Hi, Holly boy. <laughs> he runs each time. I also just went to a jewelry sale at MPC. I got those. Oh, oh pretty. 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 And let me see. Those. Oh, I like that. And yes. Are they like vinyl records? Yeah. <laughs> like gold records? Those, those little, gold records for her golden CDs. voice. <laughs> I like my earrings to not match. So um well I, 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 I would I go a, I'd go to a store to buy just one where a place where they only have one at left. I have a they collection for you, Susan, because I have a num I have lots of single earrings. Oh well why don't you just you know I'm starting a trip. I'm just gonna bring them over. They don't have this, they don't have to all match. You could just you know. it's cool i'm just going to give them to you <laughs> okay i'll take your earrings all righty rue so well, like our now. name of our our name of our room robin in case you didn't know okay can you say it, kyle um hold on i gotta scroll up use coupon code harlan crow at checkout for 150k off <laughs> you heard what happened with the clarence thomas day right yes I heard all about. You're an recording. attorney. What the hell, Robin? Come on, man. It's disgusting. He's disgusting. And there's no way they're going to be able to get rid of him, right? Uh, oh, but... I think he. They should put pressure on him to just resign. But I don't think. He'll... But thing but I, there's I, a Democratic heard... president. He's going to resign over his dead body. Yeah. What, Ryan? His his mom is living in a in a house that the guy owns rent free. Yeah, rent free. Just... Yep. And and, Ooh, yeah. and fixed it all up and everything. He says, he says, well, we were going to make it into like a museum for the future because that's the home that uh, Clarence Thomas was born in or whatever. And it's like, uh huh, it's in a trust or something sure. for that day. Sure, I believe you. <laughs> yeah. No. Nah. All right, guys. I think we have a really good round. Thank you so much. I want to kick some ass tonight. Okay. Yeah. I'm not competitive at all. <laughs> and were these hard holy moly carl i'm kidding <laughs> i think our team got 10 out of 10 Wow. That was it's fun that was fun carl i really we, we it was a true group effort in our room is that I 10 out of 10 out. right or wrong? Same with us. Uh, I, I think, I, I, I think, think I every question had at least one team answer correctly. Oh, very good. At well, a minimum. I just want to let you guys all know that the team that has the lowest score is probably going to get Bill. So no pressure. We got a one. We have, we have lots of room in our room still. So and <laughs> yeah. all right. Carolyn's probably going to leave. So oh, hey, great answers. Yeah. And Carl's not Carl's not going to win today. Susan, Susan <laughs> can stop recording briefly while I do a AV PowerPoint. Okay. Okay. So, so I need, need the we answers get, read out. Outfire. We yep. Hold on. I will get them the in the chat here in a second. I need them read out for the people who yep. are watching. Will do. On our YouTube channel. Hello, all hello, you hello, YouTube hello. fans out there. Social right. trivia by Susan fans. Hello. Welcome. Come on. join us. And, so and the answers were number one was Billy Madison from 1995. Number two was a breakfast club from 1985. Three, of course, was Monty Python and the Holy Grail from 1975. 
Four was Toy Story from 1995. Five was Shrek from 2000. Six, A Fish Called Wanda from 88. Seven, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation from 1989. A great Christmas movie. Number eight, As Good As It Gets from 1997. Number nine, City Slickers from 91. And 10, Alien from 1986. And it must be Aliens, not Alien. Two that different movies. Yes, yes. Two, two different movies. And, and right, everybody dies in Aliens except for the woman, right? And a cat Definitely. or something. And the cat. Well, there's multiple people that uh, survived. She was the only one in the first one, yeah. Yeah. Came over, man. <laughs> that that was my uh that was my shutdown for my mac for ages <laughs> oh that's awesome good job carl let's go with our <laughs> let's fun. go with our um points so we're going to start off with let qui-gons be qui-gons uh we got six okay five pensive hours for jack smith we also got six use coupon code harlan crow at checkout for 150k off Eight. Oh, nice. We don't get Bill. Thanks. Um, May the fourth leads to being Sith based on the fifth. We either got five or nine, depending if we want Bill. (laughs) 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 Bill, the fire over you. I wouldn't have helped on this one. Nine? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Bill, so, so sad. So, so sorry, sad. Bill. Got nine. Sorry. I didn't win. She's like, the team so sad. She's like, we didn't get Wait, Bill's on the winning team. We're gonna we're gonna regret it. Okay, this. Met Gala Met Gala cockroach is greater than Trump. Well, thanks to what's her face, we got nine. <laughs> we got nine Yay. thanks to Paula. Don't get Bill. Okay, so how am I gonna make a decision on I figured Paula uh, would do well on this one? Split them in one, half. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> one, two, three, four. He's going to go on one because one is going to be the one that has four people and two has, I gave Deborah um, whenever at the last minute. So, Bill, you're on one. You're okay. on let Qui-Gons be Qui-Gons. Yes. <laughs> All right. By so, the way, ready for round two. Sorry and, and Hello, Bill. 7.6 on that one. For everyone's information, the, the, uh, Document, the Word doc, and the PowerPoint are both available in the chat to download if you want them. Thank this you. could be Paula's night to run the table. Sorry, Bill. Uh-huh. The rest of my team didn't think you were worth a four-point shift. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing personal we'll, or anything, we'll, Bill. We'll see if that's true by the end. I know. You know at the end of the night, if we lose to Bill by four points, that was the game. Well, you know what, Bill? <laughs> you know what the thing is, Bill? Um, this is all night. It's going to be movie-related, movie and TV show-related. So if it had been history or one of your other expertise then maybe they would have taken that four points they might do the largest trains though bill's got a lot of expertise but i don't know is 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 entertainment your category no is, carl might do generally trains. Not, but who knows you never know all right all right there, so there are train movies question yeah, is. that's true okay round two even more actors and actresses it seems there may possibly be a theme is it rats? It's not rats. I will I will give that away. Dang. Not, not bad. bad. Not bad. Nope. For some reason, whenever there's a theme now, I think of Ben and rats. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't understand that. Well, at least it's not Billy Joel, right? Oh. Mm-hmm. I like that category. <laughs> I only did. There we go. All right. Here we go. I got muted. You did. Not me, but... Didn't stick, though. Not for me. Oh, no. All right. Question one. He played Sam Seaborn in the television series The West Wing from 1999 to 2003 and briefly in 2006. His performance in the show garnered him a Primetime Emmy Award nomination and two Golden Globe nominations for Best Actor in a Drama Series, despite having won the Worst Supporting Actor Golden Raspberry for his performance in the 1985 film St. Elmo's Fire. The West Wing may not be his most famous performance to make it to videotape. And some of these questions, I after I read them, I have to pause and look for Karen's reaction. <laughs> it's always worth it. Karen's, Karen's here for the reactions. All right, I, which I can also tell when Karen knows the answer then. She knows them all. Number two. 
This actor co-starred in the 1986 film Aliens and also starred as the main character in the 1996 to 99 TV series Millennium, which was created by X-Files creator Chris Carter. He also voiced Fleet Admiral Stephen Hackett in the Mass Effect video game trilogy from 2007 to 2012. Oh, yeah. Erin doesn't look like she's happy. Number three. This actor was supposed to replace J Roger Moore as James Bond, but when he was offered the role of James Bond, the publicity improved his canceled American TV show's ratings, and it was uncanceled and renewed, contractually requiring to re him to return to the show, meaning he was not able to replace Roger Moore as James Bond. Number four. This actress's second feature film was the 1979 sci-fi film, Time After Time, after which she married the film star, Malcolm McDowell. After divorcing McDowell, she later married Ted Danson, her current spouse. I always thought Malcolm McDowell was so cute. If it's, if it's the right person I'm thinking of. Number five. This actor has voiced the Joker in various video games and animated features and TV series, played the cock knocker in the 2001 film Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, and played Kenneth W. Dantley in the 1978 film Corvette Summer. Number six. One of the many movies this actress was in was When Harry Met Sally in 1989. She wrote the semi-autobiographical novel, Postcards from the Edge, which was made into a movie starring Meryl Streep in 1990. She was also a very successful script doctor, though this is not as widely known as her acting is. Number seven. Whoops. You mean number eight? Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. he posted the same thing twice. I don't know how that happened. No, number one, number six, seven, go six, one. Yeah. Oh, crap. All right. How many? Uh, control Z, Control Z. Yes. Hold on a second. Not here. F five. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Figure out when I made the mistake in this thing. F eleven. Oh, he's again. Ah, okay. So that, yeah, good. That's when. Close, close without saving and reopen. Everything is fine. Number seven. This actor's first and last names share a tense relationship. A tense relationship. From 1992 to 98, he played Artie in the Larry Sanders show. If you can't remember the movies he was in in 1997 and 2002, perhaps it's, it was because you were blinky things. Number oh. eight. This multi-talented person co-created the TV show Get Smart with Mel Brooks. He was co-writer for the Mike Nichols' The Graduate in 1967 and appeared in Nichols' Catch-22 in 1970. He is a member of SNL's five-time club, having hosted 10 times from 1976 to 1980. Number nine. This actor is the first regular cast member of the original Star Trek series to appear in person on a subsequent live action Star Trek series. And lastly, number 10, this actor starred in Fast Times at Ridgemont High and all three Beverly Hills Cop movies. Oh, Alan loves Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, no, no, it's the other one he loves, right? It's the Blues Brothers, sorry. All right. Alan. Hey, Bill is going to go to room one. Is that what we said? Yeah. I think that's what you said. Yeah, I think so. Oh, I got to go to my room. Ready.
And I think I know two. I know a lot. I hope you know two that I don't know. I hope that I hope I actually get to know these and somebody else doesn't know them. Okay. Kyle's Do I share it. again? Yeah. Yes. All right, give me a second. It's easier for Ryan. Yep. Oh, look at it. I can see all of his. Uh, you better be careful. We can see all your stuff on the side. Oh, now. Um, it's fine. It's just coding. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, the ones I think I know are number nine and seven. Oh, you want great. to start there? I, I know one of no. those, but I don't know number nine. You can start start with one. That's fine. All right. Sam Seaborn. I know that one. Yeah. Does anybody else know it? No. I never watched The West Wing. <laughs> I never have either, but I know there was, um, I, I just happened to know this because I know he was, what's the other show? Let me see. Um, I think it's the same guy oh, who was in Parks and Rec. Uh, yeah, it's Rob Lowe. Yeah, that's right. For sure. And then um, Millennium. I do not know number two. Lance Hendricks Hendrickson Hendricks Lance Hendrickson. Never heard of him. Okay, now this one. Does anybody know it? Because I have a guess, but I don't know if it's a good guess. Oh, number three? I don't yeah. know. I don't know who it is. Well, I know that um, Patrick McGowan was was supposed to play Roger Moore. Oh. I mean, he was supposed to play James Bond at one point, but then something complicated happened and, and he had to turn it down. So I don't know if it's Patrick McGowan. Oh. It sounds like a but likely... It, but I don't know what the American TV show... Yeah. Then. Yeah, I sort of remember this story, but I don't remember who it was. was I know was that a, he was uh he didn't want to play James Bond because he's was Catholic and he wasn't he didn't fool around, he didn't like the things that happened with the women and what was uh Remington Steel? Oh, that was um That's okay. Pierce Brosnan. But, but he ended up play? playing James Bond. Yeah, he yeah, was he James play. Bond. Okay. I, yeah, I can't think of what TV, American TV shows ratings it would be. He was in Columbo a few times. He was also, McGuin was in um, The, the Prisoner? American. Yeah, but, but American. Yeah, Roger Moore would have been back in the 70s, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of before my time. <laughs> so okay so i don't i i'm just guessing i don't i don't know four I'm okay ask my husband. I, I know who it i know who it is if anybody else doesn't know what is it mary steen I, I know. mary who yeah, yeah. steen virgin it's time after time is that <laughs> that's a real the, person's name is that the one with steve steve reeves <laughs> that's the comical spelling you're, you're of thinking of christopher how do you Reeves? spell it Christopher Reeves is that S T E E M? It's a different movie. B E R G E M. Steam no, no, no. Virgin. Steam Mary B Steam Bird. B as in boy. S T E E N as in Nancy. B E R G E M. Oh, oh that's, that's very different from what I. <laughs> no, that's a much more normal thing. <laughs> I know number five. So do yeah. No idea. Yeah, there you go. Oh, Mark Hamill. Number six. I know this if if no one else does. No. Nope. I hope tell everybody us, tell us. She's a treasure. Go ahead. I did read the Princess Leia diaries and it was hilarious. Uh yeah. So oh, she um go ahead. No, I don't know her name off the top of my head, actually. Harry Fisher. There it is. Oh. She, she was wonderful in and um she just got a star. I didn't uh, know she was in Harry Met Sally. I didn't know that either. Yeah, she married the best friend. Okay, number seven. Anybody else know it? 
I know it. If if nobody Where's, else, seven is rip torn. Oh, I loved oh, him. Oh, thank you. He's the yeah, fun, right. he was on there. The funniest person in Larry Sanders. I, I never saw Larry Sanders saw, show, but but he was in X Files. Oh, I know this. The number. I mean, X. Um, what, you know what I'm talking about. The Men in Black. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know number eight. If nobody else does, I don't. Tell us. Anybody? Tell oh, us. Nope. Buck Henry. Oh, okay. I have a guess for nine, but I don't, I don't know if it's true. I don't know it. DeForest Kelly? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. He's in the pilot for Next Generation. That's right. Yeah. I know number 10, if nobody else does. No. Judge Reinhold. Okay, there's a theme on this. So that should help us tell if we got all of these right. There's a theme? Yeah, what's the theme? I didn't want to say anything because we were on a roll. Uh, Left-handed actors. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it has anything to do with their name because before Kelly, Buck, Buck Henry, Rip, Rip Torn, they don't fit. So maybe it's something they were all in the same movie or same, like were they all in some one of those movies that has like everybody in it like you know like uh, vacation or something you know wild wild west or i don't know who lance hendrickson is so he, uh he was bishop the robot and was millennium a... millennium was like a spin-off show from uh the x-files wasn't Mark oh, Hamill oh. and Carrie Fisher both in, in Star Wars movies? Yes, they were. Yeah. Yes. And isn't today May the 4th? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. That, could that be a theme? It, it sure could be. What what are I don't know how the other people apply though. Could they be all aliens is a space thing and the Forest Kelly space, but I don't know. And Rip Torn, if he was in Men in Black, that's space. He was in Men in Black, yeah. So could they all have something to do with outer space or like, you know, alternate universes or like something like that? I don't know who Buck Henry is. Um, you guys ready Buck for a two Henry minute warning? In... Hmm? Yeah, we're ready. Okay. Was was Buck Henry in um maybe involved in that um oh what's you know that Mel Brooks um Star Wars like oh space balls yeah i don't know so that would all fit i don't know what patrick mcgoon would be doing in there it's sci-fi but it wasn't space outer space rob lowe did he do something i don't recall rob lowe's in the stand with uh, that space ringwald have anything to do with Star uh, Wars? No. No. I'm not sure. Oh, here's Paula. I should get kicked out. Yeah, I can't I can't add them back into the rooms. Because they're in closing status. Because yeah. we're in closing. Yeah, she's just gonna have to sit there by herself. Uh they're all they're all done anyway, so. Oh, too easy, huh? Everybody Paula, know the team? I think I think, I think between team. Paula and Rob, they didn't need any of anyone else. Uh, is um did everybody know the theme? Um several teams have the theme. At least one team doesn't. How is Janine doing? Because <laughs> she's, she's having fun hanging out with her friends. Okay, I hope so, because <laughs> this is like not a category uh, anything that she would know. Yeah, that, that means this whole, night, this whole night is not her forte, unfortunately. No, no. So I guess someday we're going to have to do all, all stuff that relates to stuff. Well, that, she, pops originally, genetics. originally this wasn't a, an all TV and movie theme night, but I made some new categories this morning, and then it just ended up that way. Aw. All right. Well, great job, you guys. I think we did well. Yeah.
Our team had some trouble with this one. Well, we were blinky thinged on one of them. Oh, that was right. easy. That was the one I had. So first I will uh, read a long sentence and then I will go through the answers one at a time. <laughs> oh, another one of those. They're <laughs> another all connected. sentence. Okay. I will rob Lowe of his wallet and then Lance Henderson through the heart with the same weapon that I pierce Brosnan with after I marry Steenburgen in, in a Las Vegas chapel, before I mark Hamill late for class, while I carry Fisher to safety, when I rip Torn from his current cast, <coughs> just after I see a horse buck Henry off its back, until I deforest Kelly Point Park, and finally judge oh, Rainbow oh, guilty as charged. shit. Nice. Ah. Good one, Bill. Oh, Rob. Yeah, I missed that oh, one. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> How do we but miss I'm very happy ones? with all the other answers. Uh, <laughs> so um, we weren't even thinking two, about the scene. For number two, thinking. I will accept Henriksen and oh Hendrickson. Both Mark of Hemel those are considered right. acceptable. So, oh wait a minute. So I actually was on point for number nine, but uh, <laughs> we didn't get him. We, we totally we, forgot about him. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Oh, forest. yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, he was, in, he was in the first episode. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what? It, Somebody in our team got that. Get... Did anybody else get divorced, Kelly? Oh, yeah. We, yeah, got we get okay. a couple teams at least. My so team for, uh, for number three, if you got I it wrong, put that out there. It, what if I would it have helped if I said there was a happy ending to his story? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he well, we figured it out anyway. Yeah, Bond, yes, he did. Not replacing Roger and Moore. Carl, I noticed that you're the way you worded it. He said he wasn't able to replace Roger Moore, meaning yeah. that yeah, he could have replaced yeah, someone else worded. later in Bond. Yes, yeah, yeah, he caught that. The wording, oh, but I knew what the answer was that anyway. Was, so that was correct. Yeah. Yeah. Slightly <laughs> dirty, which is always nice. And and uh, Karen right away got my uh, joke on the tense relationship between Rip and yeah. Torque. Yes, that's Once awesome. Once you said that, I already knew who it was without anything else. Yeah, same I love his name. He's got a great wow. name. I, like I thought him. about doing just that, but I thought that would yeah. be too hard. <laughs> yeah, that was easy yeah. once you got that. The um, He was in a really good movie that uh, Mark, Mark is um, one of Mark's friends made a movie called The Sex Object. And he plays a main character on that. And it's an incredible movie. If you've never heard of it, because it's one of those really obscure movies, it's incredibly good. He played Are an angel in Defending Your Life. Rip Torn was yeah, in it. It's called life. The Sex that Object. Great, yeah. great line in Defending Your Life. It goes, am I in heaven? He goes, no. Actually, there is no heaven. There's no hell either. Though I hear Los Angeles is getting close. <laughs> 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 That's a good movie to put down. Okay, so let's get over to our scores. And And there's your, okay, excellent. It's in the chat for anyone who wants to download it. Get it. Kidokio kio. All right. So we're going to start off with let pensive hours for five pensive hours for Jack Smith. Eight. Good, good. Hey, let Qui Gons be Qui Gons. Ten. Uh, okay. Uh, use coupon code Harlan Crow at checkout for one hundred fifty thousand off. Nine. I smile every time. Oh. May the fourth leads to being shit shit faced on the fifth. <laughs> Eight. And Met Gala cockroach is greater than Trump. Nine. Damn, this was too easy. 8.8, Carl. The theme, the theme ones tend to get higher scores because if people figure out the theme, it makes We it did not even talk about the theme. I don't know that we <laughs> got that. Think of it. All right, so let's get everybody ready. I want everybody <laughs> nice and pretty. Put your shiny faces on. Hey. Did my cookies in make it into the picture? Your cookies? My, my Star Wars my cookies. cookies? Oh. 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 My kids gave this to me when I awesome. went to take them out to dinner. Okay, so everybody ready? Ryan, you are you sunshiny and pretty? We can't see him. He's always gonna give us a thumbs. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Okay, let's see. Dun, da, da, da. Unfortunately, the largest park I could find that had Kelly for a name was Kelly Point Park in Oregon. There's no national parks named Kelly anything. 
Oh. I totally forgot that scene. I, it, it was just a throwaway at the end of it, but I was thinking of this, this the episode where James Doohan was like, you know, a central point. Oh, no, no. Very, the, very yeah. first episode. Yep. Encounter yeah, Encounter at Farpoint. Far yeah, point. yeah, yeah um, they say it. I remember it. He's walking down yeah. with Data. I yeah, think he he's walking with Data. data. And he's I wonder if we're going to get... Um, you're, not, you're not a Vulcan boy, are you? Yeah, yeah. I wonder if we're going to get um, Adrian and Richard showing up. They were out oh, hiking all day, so I doubt it, but... <laughs> uh is richard in calvary now yeah he yeah. was eating, they were eating pancakes today all right five minute break right five, five minute, minute break. break okay bye okay bye all everything's running okay bye, bye jim uh, thanks for hanging bye. out for a while right. you got your phone number now right yeah find out where you live soon yeah crank crank call him <laughs> right yeah yeah I'm going to share my screen for a minute. Check out the photo on my page. This is for Wu. Has anybody heard from Lou? Somebody said he was fine. It just he doesn't play trivia anymore, I guess. Who? Lou. Uh, he he was back for one game not that long ago, right? I was hoping he would come back so I could send show him my video. <laughs> what was that movie that was being recommended before? The Sex Object. The Sex Object. I've never heard of it. I have to look. Does anybody know if it's on any of our services? Google. I don't know. I'd be very careful Googling for it, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I have to get things you're not looking for. Some time. <laughs> I have my safe search on. It came out in 1985. Oh, God, it's almost as old as me. Are you really that young? I'll be 40 <laughs> next year. Yes, ma'am. A baby. I'm I guess baby. my daughter is like older than you. I'm not a baby. I have a mortgage and like <laughs> and to retire at least two, three retirement accounts. So yeah. I'm not a baby. I was born older than that. That's okay. <laughs> My nephew calls me a boomer, and we always have to correct him. No, I'm I'm an elder millennial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I have a brother who's much older than me. Two of them. I'm the baby in the family. Mm -hmm. Bye. Just quite a bit. To make you feel even more older, people born in two thousand. And five of it are able to vote this year. So like, yeah. They're gotta save the country. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find where it's streaming. Ah. <sighs>
I, uh, my 1985 prob- was the year mm-hmm. I met my wife. Ooh. You got your wife? I met my wife that year. I was still in high school. Mm-hmm. Seventh grade. I was just learning how to not poop into diapers anymore. Oh, that that's... Yeah, but how long ago was it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 30, 38 years ago, give or take. <laughs> I'm, so you're so you're telling me you're 58 years old? Is that what you're telling us? No, I'm 39. <laughs> Back in the day when we were dyeing our hair and <laughs> I like it how like you start talking and then you just Yeah, talk. well, I decided not to go to some other places. That's okay. He Ramiro had asked me, he saw a meme the other day and asked me where it came from and I went to YouTube to pull up the music video it was related to and then went down a rabbit hole of listening to all the stuff that I listened to when I was in my late teens and seeing the eye makeup and the clothing and realizing I had just spent the evening getting really excited about the airline miles I secured <laughs> and <laughs> drinking an Aperol spritz because this is who I have become, you know, going to bed by 10 o'clock and getting up at 7.30 every day. I've stopped drinking myself. No more alcohol. Don't drink yourself. It's not healthy. No. Yeah. This is very <laughs> low. It's it's Prosecco, Aperol, and club soda. So it's, it's, it's a thing that Italians do, and apparently it's all the rage now and on all menus, and it's very- It was popular. Prosecco, Adderall, and- No, Aperol. Oh, oh Aperol. <laughs> I heard that, too, that's and I, I thought, thought like, that's an interesting talk. No. I'm sure she didn't say that, but no. <laughs> still. I, I am all into bubbly drinks right now, and- Prosecco's and, good. I like I that. do miss my old vines in. I miss that a lot. No more. If I could have a way to turn rosé into a frozen concoction downstairs, I would just drink rosés for Hmm. the rest of the summer. Back when I had a healthy stomach, I loved like Mai Tais and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I loved Mai Tais and what was those other ones called? Madras. And I like, Mm -hmm. I like fruity drinks. I love those. This is slightly bitter. It's because Aperol is a bitter liqueur, but not quite as bitter as Campari is, which people who drink Negronis, I think, are the worst type of people. <laughs> I just don't understand why you would want to drink bitter cough medicine when there are more pleasurable things in life. So the in chat, Susan put, it's the love object, which is a little different than what we oh, Okay, I, <laughs> I apologize, Susan. <laughs> A little different. I am not in the right state of mind. I haven't been in the last couple of weeks. So mm-hmm. okay. And we're back. So you saw I put in the chat the love object. It's uh it's about a man who's this is 2003. He makes a sex doll of his co-worker. It looks just like his co-worker. It's very Ooh. disturbing, this movie. I'm putting say- out a warning. It is extremely disturbing. The person who made this film that has Rip Torn in it is Robert Parigi. And Robert Parigi is a good friend of Mark's. Well, I don't know how good they are, but he is quite bizarre. Quite bizarre himself. But anyway, if you want like something bizarre? that will make you go, what the hell? Is it John Waters bizarre or? I don't know who that is. <gasps> oh, this my is, God. This no, is, this is God. extremely bizarre. <laughs> not know who John Waters my young millennial self knows about pink flamingos this is very you don't bizarre. know who the great divide okay so Faye you're in charge of watching the love object and letting us know if it's like this John Waters person I don't know did you um, ever can we watch the love object it'll it'll be a while before mm-hmm. I will be able to report on it but probably somewhere I think did for homework Paris some of us need to watch Billy Madison oh yeah. that didn't look very good mm-hmm. Oh, it was take that back right now. <laughs> I didn't look good. Doesn't mean I think it's just back. Yeah, horror horror film. Film. my favorite part of that movie is when he was next to the I guess it was a trans mm-hmm. ham and he was playing um Billy uh Squire 
trying to be cool in the morning and all the kids were just looking at him and I could so relate because that's what we did in high school so I'm not watching like, this oh movie God. Susan I'm not watching this I movie. think I think it's probably a good idea you don't watch it I don't think no you... because like I refuse to watch Megan because I just don't want to just this is a little bit dark, dark. and it's very strange what was it you said Paula <laughs> Did, Susan, did you ever watch Hairspray? Oh, of course. That was great. That's, that's John, a John Waters film. That's John Waters. Oh, okay. That's nothing like that. <laughs> yeah, but that's one of his that, that's, 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 that's one of his milder films. That, that yeah. is, that is very mild, mild film. So, I mean, it's, it's no less than the dust. Yeah. Hair, hairspray <laughs> hairspray is, is a John Waters film that can get an actual rating to show people. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, John, no, this is nothing what, like that. What, <laughs> This is, you need to watch Pink Flamingos and wa wait till the end. I don't think, Faith, don't watch Love Object. I don't think you will, I think you no, will. I'm not going to watch it because it's a horror movie that involves a sex doll and I'm, I'm just not going to do that. Rip Torn, he's great. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm mentally, I'm not in the house. Watch the Larry Sanders show. I'm eating, I'm eating gummy things, so it's going to be, I keep Did getting, you know that Kraft Macaroni and Cheese came out with gummy candies that are Kraft Macaroni and Cheese flavored? I ain't gonna eat that. No, that's gross. It's interesting. Interesting. This is I what think cannabis. Is I don't understand. <laughs> well, well, we have abortion bans, so why not just have macaroni and cheese flavored candy? Like, no. no. <laughs> All right, together. Carl, get us out of this mess. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, Kyle. Kyle, what's coming up on the next data skeptic? Oh God, well, what hey. am I thinking? You're right. It's after two. Well played. Um, yeah. This week on Data Skeptic, I talked to uh, one of the up the ups at the Gallup poll. Since I've been Ooh. covering all types of things on surveys, I wanted to get into that household name, tracked him down, and we asked what the Gallup poll is all about, how they do their surveys, and the history of it. So that's this week on Data Skeptic. That was really good. I really enjoyed this Gallup poll because I've always been interested in that, you know, how they I mean, get somebody from Pew. <laughs> We're, we tried really hard. It didn't work out. Oh, well, maybe someday, but it was really yeah, because then you can make a lot of pew, 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 pew. <laughs> I really did like I, I really did like the um, discussion with the Gallup poll. Thank you. Bob has a chicken. They're Apparently. huge. Do you see that they're like the size of a hand? Look how, oh, that's not them. I'm going to talk about the other one. All right. So, yeah, um, I wanted to share that Carolyn, where is Carolyn? Carolyn's still here? Yeah. Where is she? I hope so. Carolyn, she better be. <laughs> Carolyn just wrote a wonderful Wikipedia page. This was a, uh, I'll let you, I'll let her tell you what it is. I'm going to share it. Carolyn, can you give a rundown of what this is? Okay. So it was uh, basically almost like a stub. It was on the British Premonitions Bureau. All hands, anybody who's heard of it. <laughs> so no. I had actually heard of... The, some of the premonitions and the actual um, event that sparked this, but I did not know that there was actual bureau. So way back, like on Unsolved Mysteries or something like that, a thousand years ago, I remember hearing about it. But um, Joe Nickel, Richard Weissman, Richard Weissman. Yep. So people, you can't. So tell people what it is. What what was? So, and there was a terrible disaster um, in Wales where. Uh, over like 150 people died in a mining, the sludge from the mining collapsed and- Oh, that was an episode of The Crown. Yeah, it was, that's the only where place I heard it of it. It was in The Crown. Crown. Um, so anyway, so many people died. And of course, stories came out that some of the kids had said they had nightmares and some of the families had dreams before the event happened. So this psychologist, psychiatrist was interested in kind of some fringe theories to begin with. He was writing a book about um, the theory that if you heard you may die, your immune system may actually kind of crash and you die. So he heard about a boy who survived the disaster, but later died of shock. So he went to the disaster site and then he heard of coincidences that people just missed it because um, they were late or something, but he also heard stories of these premonitions. So he and I think his name was Peter Fairley, who was a well, pretty well-known journalist at the time, created a bureau where they collected 
premonitions in the hope of averting future disasters. Spoiler alert, they did not. Um, there were a couple of well-known um, hits, um, and that's why I had to, I had to um, include one of them because it was well known. It's been on other things. Um, there were some hits that were kind of creepy, but overall over 90%, it was just, and if you looked at the, if I, I would imagine if you could actually read what they actually put, which I couldn't find, I'm sure it was vague enough, but they counted it as a hit. You know what I mean? Like a plane crash. Well, in the sixties, that's not uncommon to have a plane crash, right? Um, the other the other prediction that came true, but I can't put my own commentary on it, was Robert Kennedy. Well, how many assassin assassinations were there in 1968? So, you know, it, would, it wouldn't really have been a surprise that John Kennedy did ultimately, or not John Kennedy, uh, Robert Kennedy ultimately, you know, it wasn't very surprising. So anyway, long story short, um, it didn't prevent any more disasters but um they got rid of it after a while right yeah it, it disbanded it dispersed right after his death how do you um, how do you know if you prevented a disaster <laughs> well there's that. well their oh, idea it they didn't had, happen <laughs> yeah they had, it didn't happen right right I tell you all the things i prevented last year <laughs> yeah <laughs> me yesterday too. i did a bunch yesterday there was you no don't even know war. about it so I also, I added a critical review section uh, with different skeptics so that it kind of balanced it out a little bit more because it kind of sounded like an advertisement for an upcoming movie beforehand. <laughs> so it really did. It was like an advertisement. I'm going to show it right now. I see Rob put the this right here. This is Rob's hallmark right here. Oh, thank you. Putting a sidebar. Yeah, I, I, as you've been talking about, I did that. I added it to Wiki Project Skepticism. And I yep, made a few just did it right now. So, I don't want to put my fingers on it anywhere. Nobody's going to know that I, <laughs> nothing. Here's, here's what it looked like before. Just ignore this yellow thing here at the top. And it used to be that long and it was five citations. Really a stub. Yeah, Good job, stub. Carolyn. Yeah, great job, Carolyn. I've never heard of this before. It was on our to-do list. It's, it's been on, on there for ages, huh, Carolyn? Yep. So now I need to go through the to-do list and find take something, something else. else that's wonderful i'm so glad that's off the list and i'd never heard of it i think we should get richard saunders to do some research on it and write up an article and then that would be the the thing that yeah, you might need cool. predictions he's the expert on predictions so that would be interesting talk about oh carolyn <laughs> we salute you well thank you yeah, saluted there. All right. Um, I, I usually don't... do, but it's with a different finger. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have anything coming up except this Saturday is um, Mark and I and anybody else who wants to go with me is going over to Santa Cruz. We're going to see the beginning of hopefully of a brand new group that's going to start up on Santa Cruz oh. on Saturday. I'm just going to go and take pictures and hopefully write it up for Skeptical Inquirer. Richard Saunders is in town on the 8th, back into Oakland. I'm going to drive up. Mark and I, I think, are driving up on the 7th to go see Jay Diamond and uh, Brian Hart, if anybody wants to go with us. I'm done with this. And hey, is Brian Hart's also in town, up in the, well, the Bay Area. And that's all I've got until I get ready to go up to the Sacramento workshop on the 13th. Sacramento, you guys. I'm going to be there in Sacramento on the 13th. <laughs> Stupid! I come did, up did, there. Did the Santa Cruz there. people? Did the Santa Cruz people ask you to come, or did you just find out about it and you're showing up? Um, no, no. They told they told me way in advance uh, a month or more ago that that they're trying to put something together and they're hoping that they saw that I'm a frequent poster for Monterey County skeptics and since it's so close and I'm like you came to the right person if you're starting to trying to start a group and so. We did all kinds of stuff and he's just really active. And then another guy had said, I wanted help too. So they put on this thing. On, it's going to be like a meet and greet for the first day, you know, like, well, what do you guys think? We've got a logo. We got a website. We got a Twitter account. We got YouTube. They went, they did everything. It was great. So we're going to see how it goes and, and uh, start doing like joint uh, uh, talks and events together. They're about 45 minutes away from us. 
the Monterey County skeptics. So we want to be able to like, a, they'd be like a sister group. And Santa Cruz is crazy. <laughs> that is the height of, woohoo. <laughs> it always has been. Yeah, it's it's. If you like there. comic books, though, there's a store called Comicopolis. So is it still there? I wonder. I believe it is. Well, a lot of things didn't make it through the pandemic, so I don't know. No, I it's... think it's still there. And so oh. if you see a guy named J.D. Arnold, I know him. Ooh, everybody can go I... see J.D. Yes, Gail? Can I, can I tell you about something that some sure. of you might be interested in? Um, I teach classes for the Ali at UNLV program. And in the fall and spring, I do skepticism classes. But in the summer, I do an eight-week class in parliamentary procedure. I'm signed up, Gail. The, uh huh. I'm signed up. Oh, cool. That's why I was telling everyone, if, any, if you're interested in democracy, that's what parliamentary procedure is really about. And it's not necessarily what you see on television happening in Congress. Uh, but I, we do, it's an eight week class. You have to join Ali at UNLV to take the class, but it's on Zoom. So it's, I think it's $40, right, Karen, to join for the summer? And then once you're joined, you can take as many classes as you want for free, but you have to be a member. Yes, and for right now, you need to go, well, unless it's changed since last week, you do need to call the phone number and do it on over the telephone because it's not yet listed on the website, the summer schedule. I think it's there now. Great. Because usually you can do it in, on, on the website. Great. On that note, we, we got Gail for our Ollie coming up next semester, right? Ollie at the Pacific, Gail? Oh, right. <laughs> She's like, uh, oh, oh yeah, you guys. It's not, it's not for, it's not for a while. It's in the fall, right? Right, but we, yeah. but we. I love, the, I love this community. You. Look at this little group of people. You. It's just so yeah. nice. There's like forty of us, and we just kind of rotate around, and it's so great that you guys all know each other. Yeah, and nobody you know, believes what, in that's, anything, that's right? Anything what, what, Bill? Nobody believes in anything. <laughs> Trivia. Social oh, trivia on Thursday nights. That's the only thing we believe in. So let's get started back because that's there's very interesting stuff that Rob, I mean, Carl has for us apparently. Oh, here it is. All right. TV catchphrases. I will put out a phrase and then you provide the information that I'm asking for in the parentheses. This should go pretty fast. Number one, kiss my grits. Give me the character or the show. Number two, hey, let's be careful out there. Give me the show. Number three, nip it in the bud. Character or show? Number four, and that's the way it is, character or show. Uh, I might be taking a little liberty with the word character in that question. Hint, hint. Number five, I kill me, character or show. Number six, Mrs. Peel, we're needed, character or actor. It says of actor, but that's a typo. Number seven. Not the mama. Give me the show. Number eight. Up your nose with a rubber hose. Character or show. Number nine. I'm not a number, I am a free man, character. And number 10, I know nothing, actor or character. So does people write these? I mean, now that we're on a writer's strike, I mean, is there somebody who's like coming up with these catchphrases or does the actor kind of say, I, that's my line? It's, it usually starts out as a writer, but sometimes on rare occasions it's an actor. 
So there's like an actor somewhere. I mean, an actor, there's, there's a writer somewhere who has like a, like a data list of all these phrases they keep coming up with. And someday they're going to have a character that will say, I wouldn't be surprised. Up your nose with rubber hose. I wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't a writer out there who had like a, a, a list of catchphrases. They're trying to figure out where they can apply them. <laughs> and then they go in there like, hey, let's write for this guy. He's going to, I think this would fit this guy. I've been wanting to use this for ages. Okay, so let's um, put Bill on yeah, and one. And what's your face? What's her face is going to go on. But that's Paula. I'm on five. I'm on group five. Oh, I yeah. know who you are. I'm just trying to figure out what room you're in. Okay. <laughs> Don't uh, move me. There we go. So. Okay, I know three. When I say them, you're going to go, oh, duh. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> kiss my kiss grits. grits that's what is her name Flo yeah was it Flo which what was the show called do you remember Alice Waitress Alice. ah Flo on Alice yeah I feel like okay hey let's be careful out there that's Hill Street Blues oh that's that was the, the morning you know cop lecture always end you know tell her who's on the street who's going to be a menace of the day and oh. hey, 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 let's be careful out there. I never saw it. Nip it in the bud? That's Barney Fife. We got to nip yep. it in the bud. Let's nip it. <laughs> <laughs> For which show? Mayberry? Andy Griffith's show. F-I-F-E. Barney Fife. I don't remember him saying that. Oh, he saw it, saw it all nip the time. It. We you got what? to nip it I think in I, the bud. I, I think I used to say, and that's the way, that's a TV, that's a... Um, that's um, a... Cosell? A, Cosell? A, a, it was a TV anchor. Howard Cosell? TV anchor. I don't think it's Howard Cosell. I think it's more like... Um, uh, let me ask my husband. Hey, Honey, hey, who hey, was hey, the TV anchor? Is, is, is that what Walter Cronkite used to say? Walter Cronkite sounds right. It's one of those. Guys. Mark. Somebody, somebody used to close the TV news, news anchor who them. said, and that's the way it is. Walter Cronkite. Walter Cronkite. Yeah, Mark yeah, says oh, it's Walter Cronkite it. too. Okay. I kill me. I think that's, um, is that not um, Eddie Murphy in his Beverly Hills Cop character? Um, <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> oh, but he said this is TV shows. TV catchphrases. <clears throat> they kill me. Um, it, it could be um, the Fawns. I think so. I don't think so. You don't think so? Well, it could be the Fawns. It could be. I wouldn't. I would. I would. Well, up your nose is a rubber with a rubber hose. I'm pretty sure that comes from the same show from Happy Days, doesn't it? I think that that's or Laverne and Shirley. Oh, it could be Laverne and Shirley. Could also be Welcome Back, Cotter. Ooh, that's not helping us any. <laughs> well, seven is dinosaurs. Oh, oh, I I, I, know I know six. We skipped that. Oh yeah, six oh, is the Avengers. That's John Steed. John Steed. He said he wanted the character or the actor. So the actor would be Patrick McNee. Patrick Mc... Mark would know this. Mark, do you, what was Patrick. the... Who was the... Patrick McNee. That's it. And, and it's John Steed is the character. How come I've never even heard of the show? Well, when I was growing up, see, I wanted to be Mrs. Peel, so okay. I I don't know who the oh, and this is Peel was Diana Rigg. Okay, oh, I see. Remember her, and she wore like a black leather uh, uh, cat suit. Only the black and white seasons. Mark says Patrick McNee is spelled M A C. Um, K. 
don't know, I, I forgot what he said. <laughs> it might just be N E A. M need N E A D. McNeed. No, I think it's McNeed. If if I've got his name right. But anyway, we've got the character. Up your nose. Up your nose with a rubber hose. I can hear a, a, this a sounds like a Laverne and Shirley kind of thing, don't you think? I can hear a nasally female voice saying it. Um, well, you know, Laverne and Shirley were on Happy Days and then they were yeah. a spinoff. It would be, it fits. Yeah, Lenny or Squiggy, one of them was saying that. Yeah. That's what I would think. Number nine, obviously, that is uh, uh, number six. Huh? Like that? Yeah, number six from The Prisoner. Mm -hmm. Patrick McGuinn. That's what I, I am not a number. I'm a free man. Oh, yeah, I don't remember. He that. adds these just because he knows that. Mm hmm. He's it's a gimme because he's he's got a pity. He's got a pity. Uh Carl's throwing a a pity thing to me. Because yeah. <laughs> I usually don't know anything. I know nothing, yeah, Charles. Uh Sergeant I know Schultz. nothing. I know I nothing. see nothing. <laughs> My dad hated that show, but I loved it. I loved the music and and, and yeah. Uh, it was hilarious. What was his name? Uh, that was so the the guy who ended did that game show that was kissing everybody all the time. Richard so, Dawson. Yeah, yeah, but boy, he was cute in Rogan's Heroes. I agree. <laughs> but then I saw him on. Oh, it was like, ooh. Why does he kiss everybody like that? It was so gross. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I would never be on that show. Be like, ooh, get your cooties off me. <laughs> I kill me. Did we did come up with something for that? Mm -mm. Oh, sorry. Let me check. Well, I think what were you thinking, Robin? Did you have did the you see oh. my my guess we'll put was, Eddie Murphy? Um, was Eddie Murphy. But uh, these are all TV shows. But though, yeah, you're right. It's not that's not a TV show. And and it, then my other guess was the Fawns. Fawns is close and happy days. Fonz. Have you seen him now? Henry Wrinkler? Oh my God. Oh yeah, because he's on that show Barry, which is a great show. And yeah. He, yeah. I, I went and walked, looked at the previews of that and I thought, okay. I was not interested in it. And for some reason, I finally started watching it and it was really good. It's so violent. Uh, it it's funny. It's really intelligent. <laughs> it's really good. Corey's watched all of them, I think. I've watched a few. I liked it. But you uh, liked Breaking Bad, so of course you would like that. I love Breaking Bad. We're currently watching like The that. Diplomat. It's like that. It's really intelligent. Barry is. Just like Breaking Bad is really smart. Yeah. I recommend The Diplomat. This and new show on... Where is that? I'm, I'm not familiar. I think it's on it. Netflix. It and it has Carrie Russell, who played the wife in The Americans. Mm -hmm. And she... Well, listen, it's... it's it was her name felicity? felicity oh she was she played felicity earlier in an earlier show yeah i like her yeah i like her too um we're watching nothing right now mark is, uh, mark is watching a lot of reruns of gun smoke oh Corey does that god Corey and mark should get together <laughs> sit and watch gun smoke together <laughs> oh boy we're, watch. we're done we're done we're, we, oh, no, we never got no, there's probably got a nine we don't have, or did we put something down for that one? Fonz. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Fonz. <laughs> yeah. Which I, I'm not confident in that guess, but I, I'm I did. I finished nine. a puzzle. There's just been so many good trials and stuff on. And I don't oh, know. Oh, there have been. And today was a, a, a banner day for trials because um, that uh, copyright trial. Um, Oh, what was that about? Yeah, I don't yeah, remember that. Uh, Marv, the Sheeran. estate of Marvin Gaye oh, was suing oh, yeah. um, uh, Ed Sheeran. And I listened he, to those two songs. That was ridiculous. It was completely ridiculous. But they won against um, uh, Pharrell. Yeah, and, that, that and, was a total. And, that, that was who's that Pharrell? Was, that song was a complete ripoff of Marvin Gaye. Oh, the, I don't oh so there was so. more than one song? I don't think so. I don't think it was anywhere near it. I do. I, I I I really do. And and I really like 
the sound of both, you know, of the Pharrell song, but it was it was a total ripoff, I thought, of the Marvin Gaye song. I didn't think so. I I, I think it's uh, really hard to, to deal with copyrights for music like that. It's just I do too, because there's so much, you know, like if if they want so many beats, kind of if they want to kind of like um, have something with a similar feel to it, you know, I mean, there's yeah, it, it is really difficult to say, you know what is within bounds you know like yeah and there's only so many chord progressions you know that's right um you're gonna have i mean look at bluegrass music that's there's only one chord progression in bluegrass music <laughs> right. and and yet nobody's suing anybody over copy, copyright so yeah well did you see um they're talking about uh chat ai that is doing the music now Mm -hmm. they're able, to, they're able to make the ai sound like whoever you wanted to sound you can mash up people it's it's crazy yeah. they can make any sounds it's just like oh my god i'm glad i'm not dealing with this hey yeah, that was fun it was do, All do right. you have do you have clips of the catchphrases being used? I do indeed. All right. Yeah, we need to we need to start. I get all excited and I start. Okay. Forgetting. Number one was Flo from the TV show Alice. Number two was Hill Street Blues. Number three, Barney Fife from the Andy Griffith Show. Number four, Walter Cronkite from the CBS Evening News. Number five, Alf from the TV show Alf. Number six, Patrick McNee as John Steed in the Avengers British TV show. Number seven was the baby in Dinosaurs, Dinosaurs being the answer. Number eight, Vinny Barbarino in the show Welcome Back, Cotter. Number nine was number six. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just to confuse people, number nine was number six in The Prisoner. And number 10 was John Banner playing Sergeant Schultz in Hogan's Heroes. Would, was you, mind, Jewish? would you mind repeating that mm -hmm. fact about the lead actors in, their, in, in that show? Yes, in, in Hogan's Heroes, all the German officers Clink, well, all the German actors basically. Clink, Sergeant Schultz, General Borkhalter, Major Hochstetler, all those guys were played by Jews who only agreed to be in the show under the condition that the Germans could never come out ahead or look competent. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for repeating that to our listening audience out there. Nice. We appreciate your views and we would appreciate it if you would give us a subscribe and a thumbs up. And <laughs> click the little button, the little alarm that goes bing. bing, bing. <laughs> and go back and watch the entire back catalog. Yeah, the entire back catalog. I think we're at like 90 videos or something like that. And, you know, consider joining us. And, and once again, the, the, the questions and the PowerPoint are in the chat for anyone who cares to download it. Very Thank good. You, All right, let's see. I have a feeling that we're going to get high scores in this one. I hope you got some tough ones coming up here, Rod. Is everybody on the equal? What'd you call me? Oh, Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> Kyle. Try again. Oh, closer. Closer. You get two strikes. Two strikes, Susan. <laughs> wow. Wow. It goes, wow. wow. Hey, you you next. Heavily into the candy tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm almost done with the box of the milk beds. Yeah. She's you having one of fake you know Adderall what, cocktails. <laughs> you know, it's really sad. You know, what was really sad is Ben's response. He sounded so disappointed, like I was his <laughs> hero, and that I all of a sudden just was like, oh, man, that is just, oh, man. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> like I've just burst his bubble, and he thought that, oh, look who's Mike showing Wolf up. Here. Mike, Mike Wolf is showing up. Round four. All right, so let's get our scores. Mike is here. All right, let's see where we're going to put Mike. Okay, let, no, no. Five pensive hours for Jack Smith. Another eight. Hey, let Qui-Gons be Qui-Gons. Nine. You will not be getting my Mike Wolf. All right. Use coupon code Harlan Crow at checkout for 150,000 off. Eight. May the fourth leads to being shit faced on the fifth. Seven. Sith faced. Yes. He's not even worried about she it. She cannot Ooh. say Sith. Met Gala. She can't Rose. say Carl either, so you know. <laughs> it's greater than Trump. You got nine. Wow. Ooh. So one of these days I'll do a round. <laughs>
Here's all the names Susan has called me. For a bonus round. <laughs> <laughs> by I don't, that time, we'll need, that we'll would need be to use, bonus round, right? Yeah, and yep. by that time, we'll need to use mono rules. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mike Wolf, are you there? Yes, I am. You're not there. You're you're blocked mm -hmm. out. Or it mm -hmm. must be really dark where you are. No, there I go. Oh, he's on the beach. He's at hey, Ryan's he's house. Beautiful there. Yeah, I think so. He's at Ryan's house. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Mike, you're on five pensive hours for Jack Smith. Everybody's right. pretty close. There was an 8.2 on that round. I hope you're going to give us something really difficult, Carl. Oh, nope. uh, Mike, this everything might be a little harder and the bonus might be a little harder. TV and movie related. No. And it's all, all Carl right. tonight. Okay. Um, <coughs> this, this, you may not understand the, the category to this round until a couple questions in. Double your pleasure, double your fun. Part one. That means in future weeks, there may be another round. <gasps> Number one, 1998 film about an asteroid or a comet on a collision course with the Earth and NASA's plan to send a team to deal with it. Billy Bob Thornton was in it. <laughs> Number two. Oh, I didn't mute everyone. It's okay. We can behave. <laughs> Number two. Yeah, right. 1998 <laughs> film about an asteroid or comet on a collision course with the Earth and NASA's plan to send a team to deal with it. Morgan Freeman was in it. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. 1989 comedy about a cop and his dog partner. The dog dies at the end. Uh, I'm going to cry. Therefore, 1989 comedy about a dog, cop and his dog partner. The dog survives at the end. Oh, no. <laughs> Isn't anybody in charge? <laughs> Number five. 2000 film about a human mission to Mars, which goes badly awry. Val Kilmer is in it. Number six. <laughs> 2000 film about a human mission to Mars, which goes badly awry. Tim Robbins is in it. I love this category. Number seven. 2010 animated comedy film about a highly intelligent supervillain whose evil plan goes awry and he becomes the hero in the end. Jason Siegel voices a character. Number eight, 2010 animated comedy film about a highly intelligent supervillain whose evil plan goes awry when he becomes the, and he becomes a hero in the end. Jonah Hill voices a character. <laughs> Number nine, 2013 film that's basically Die Hard in the White House. Gerald Butler is in it. Number 10. Since the theme. Oh, yeah. 2013 film that's basically Die Hard in the White House. Channing Tatum is in this one. No idea. I didn't see Die Hard. No? Mm -mm. What? I haven't wrong, seen a lot dude. of things. What? Die wait, Hard wait, the best wait. Wow. Ever. Wow, Susan. Wow. <laughs> no, no, you've already lost it. You've Dang already it. lost it, Ben. <laughs> I already know what you think. Wow. 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 Crazy. All right. To your room. Some, some people, I tell you. Some people. I don't know those people. I don't know what their name is. <laughs> mm. Why do we always call him by the wrong name? Which room am I putting Mike into, huh? Okay, so I'm going to my room. My room, I'm going to be sitting in the corner picking my nose because I know nothing. Speaking of which, okay. Armageddon and Deep Impact. Yeah. Yeah. Which one though? Yeah. Well, Armageddon the first one's first Armageddon, one. and the second one's Deep Impact. All right. Gene, you watch a lot of movies. I've seen a lot. Turner, of You're so busy. I don't know where you find the time. I've Turner, seen Turner and Hooch is the one with, um, with Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. And then K9 is the one with uh, Belushi's Jim Belushi. brother. Jim Belushi. Uh, does the, the dog lives in the Tom Hanks one, right? I have no memory. I of... feel like I've seen it recently and I feel like the dog lives. 
I'm pretty sure the dog lives in Turner and Hooch. I've seen it a couple yeah. times because it was filmed here where we live. Yeah, I, I, I feel like the dog. Yeah. So what is three? K hey, nine. Oh, oh, that's a that's a movie. Okay. <sighs> what do we say for number one? Armageddon. Thank you. Armageddon and Deep Impact. Okay. K hey, nine. Unless and somebody Hooch. else has something, can we come back to the Mars ones? Yeah, yeah, I don't. I I can't. I don't know those. I I can see them, you know, but I but as yeah. far as pulling up names, uh, eight is Mega Mind. Mega, yeah. Myself. Jason Siegel. Yeah, I don't watch animated films, so I don't know what that one is. What? This could be a so DC the, film. Maybe number Pixar. nine is that is that White House has fallen? I know they it launched the whole uh, Gerald Butler, Morgan Freeman franchise. I know that. <sighs> Okay, so let's see. There was a mission to Mars. And there's one where uh, it's got Gary Sinise and they go to the face on Mars, but I think that one was later. Um, Unless we got a better idea, I would just put mission mission to Mars on both of those because yeah, strategic right on one of them. <laughs> Good call. Uh, Wait, did we did did we finish the the? Are we coming back to the? Did we finish the rest of them? Because I think I know what number ten is. Go for it. White House down. Cool. I don't remember number nine. I've never seen that. White House has fallen. Yeah, because that that was the the whole uh, franchise. Yeah. Where everything was has fallen. Olympus has fallen, and oh, you know, I've never seen those. I like Gerard Butler. Yeah, actually, I'm wondering if the first one is Olympus has fallen. Uh, but but they all they all had the code name has fallen. Yeah. But yeah, there was like two or three of them. And Gerald Butler's always like the the badass Secret Service guy and, and Morgan Freeman is always the president and they're always trying to kill the president. Jeez, that's a bummer. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be the president. He's trying All to right, seven. And we need five, right? For five, we put Mission to Mars. Oh, I thought that's what we put for six. Correct. Okay. <laughs> I got it. Covering the spread. There you go. Seven. Good. Mm, Mars to Mission. <laughs> oh, no, no. Mega Mind. Okay, so it's probably Mind Meld. Meg massive Mind Meld. Mind flow. Mind your megs. <laughs> I'm, I'm the only one who thought that was funny. It's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's about a waitress <laughs> named Meg. Okay, super, super, super intelligent, super villain whose evil plan goes away when he becomes a hero. And okay, so obviously, if I was going to make a movie that had it had a highly intelligent super villain whose evil plan goes away and becomes a hero in the end, I would call it "Kiss My Grits." Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> and my Ten hero would be Flo from, from Alice, yeah. <laughs> Mega Flo. <laughs> Mega Grits. <laughs> I like Kiss My Grits. Kiss My Grit. No. <laughs> How does she say? That's what they. That's what they yell as they're flying through the. Well, as, as a I will make the world. As, as a southerner, she has to pronounce grits. It was two syllables. Grit. Grit. Yes, my grit. Grit. My grit. Grit. Oh man! So somebody somewhere had that written on their spreadsheet of someday we're going to have a sitcom that the character is going to be able it's to gonna say, be a sassy southern character and she's going to say kiss my grits. That's it. They've had it on the. It's like those people whenever you have a hand of cards, you know, like Cards Against Humanity, and you got this card. You've it's been in your hand since the very beginning of the game. And I'm going to find somewhere to play this thing. I'm going to play this card somewhere. Well, boy, you guys are coming up with some good. I have, I have never heard of a, an animated comedy film about. I don't, I don't know of any any. Well, Mega Mind is eight, so that's a comedy film. Yeah, I don't know of any. I don't know I've any animated films. Oh, Mega Mind was really good. I've never heard of Mega Mind. Uh, is uh. Will, what's what the about name from Saturday Night Live? And Brad, Brad Pitt's in it and Tina Fey's in it. I'm thinking of the time period. What are those things, the Minions? Could oh, it be that was before Minions. Yes. I don't think there yeah, were Minions. I think you're on the right track. Oh, incredible. And well, maybe. Oh, you're talking about it and uh, something me, what's it called? A, uh, Despicable Me. Despicable, Despicable me. me. I love Despicable Me. Could that be? Yes. Oh. Let's go with that. Despicable Me. You gotta be kidding me. I love those. I have them all memorized because, but I don't know any of the characters. The, well, does the super villain become a hero in the end? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're wonderful. Yeah, There's like four of them out. Drew They're all to good the world, too. But then he he adopts the girls and ends up being the, the good guy. His name is Crew. Crew. Maybe, yeah. maybe Crew. we got it. Oh, come Wow. I have, we used to, well, where I used to work, we'd put, we'd put these things on and it would run all day. So an eight hour day, you'd watch it six or seven times, but you'd only hear it. So <laughs> you're busy. But, oh my God, there's so many. Oh, for the I kids. Had yeah. Uh, yeah. We just go, okay, what do we, and some days we just leave the same movie running. It's yeah. like maybe three days or, or more before somebody decided to change it. <clears throat> Got all those memorized, all those. Yeah. But I love Despicable Me. They had great music. Well, see, that was after that came out after my kids were older. So on and you were me I too. Well, my my daughter would have been that. eleven in twenty ten, and so we we're just about exiting the animated. Well, it's an adult film. movie. I don't think it's for the kids. It is for us. It is hilarious. If you guys haven't seen the Despicable Me series, they're hilarious. It is true that you know, as my kids were growing up, and and I would take them to see all the the, the films for that. A lot of them were surprisingly good. Yes. A lot of comedy for a lot of reasons that yeah. the kids yeah. didn't catch. Yeah. Ryan, did you watch the Despicable Me Despicable Me series? Oh yeah, there's like four of them, right? Yep. Oh, they're so and, good. The, and I think the the Minions have a couple movies now. Yeah, and those are even good. Is is I don't like slapstick, but they're actually really pretty good. The origins of the minions, yeah. I I'd never heard of them before, but when the first movie came out, that would be about right 2010. We were at Psycon or Tam, one of the two, and people were like, "We're gonna get shirts that say Susan's minions on them, and they're bright <laughs> yellow." And I remember people were like, "How are we gonna get those while we're here in Vegas?" And they're like, "We'll get them made," and and people were like. Okay, and I thought, what are you guys talking about? So yeah, it'd be about 2010. And then of course I saw them and they were so good. It's oh, and you know what else is really good? The Incredibles. What's that? Yeah. 
superheroes like you've got the guy who's the woman she stretches have like a big chest that's what i that's the movie i was going to suggest i couldn't remember the name yeah of that, the incredible i don't think really it's right. good. i think there's three of them two three they're all spoofs on like, like a, a family of superheroes yeah superheroes and then Mom, the Dad, baby they're like i don't think the baby jojo has any special powers and then they find out that jojo has probably the oh, most special God. powers has all the powers. Yeah, boy. <laughs> a little infant that turns into a demon. Yeah. Oh, they're so good. They're really, there really are movies that are not. I know they're aimed at the kids. That's where they sell all the, the swag for, but they're terrific. I'm gonna write those down. I want to go, I'm gonna see these again. <laughs> it's been a while. Not like I have anything else to do. Let's see A B and the Incredibles. And the and the um the what's it called how you, how the um, Toy Stories are also really excellent. Yeah. Now my kids were young when the Toy Stories came out, so mine too. I've seen mine those too. quite a few. The the last one that ended, the fourth one or the fifth one that just happened not so long ago, they had a lot of time between it. It is it ends the series and it does a fabulous job. Oh, Such our kids must be movie. about the same age, Jane. How old are yours? Uh, mine were born in 1990 and 92. Okay. My first one was 96. Yeah. 96 and 99. Mine are 91 and 88. Where is Caspian these days? Yes, I'm going to find trivia. So, yeah. Anyway, I think there's a lot of great cartoons out there that are just wonderful. <laughs> Frozen was really good, too. Well, I did see that. My daughter and I watched it, even though she was like, you know, like in her late twenties. <laughs> when we we decided to watch that together, really good. I've <laughs> seen it probably forty or fifty times now. And then we were on a plane. I was on a plane. I actually watched it on there too because I never had a chance to sit and watch. Just yeah. boy, when she does that song, it's like wow, the power. <sighs> We don't, know what you, we don't know what you're talking about because we were in the breakout room until halfway through that. All sentence. right. Uh, maybe she's talking about that being one of the answers. No. Okay. That's so, good. We were good. talking about some of the best movies out there are animated cartoons aimed at kids, but they're actually wonderful to watch as adults. That's true of almost any cartoon. <laughs> well. Or any of the good ones. The good ones. Yeah. Yeah. Bullwinkle Boy, had a lot of jokes that went over the kids' heads. And yeah. bugs. Had a lot of them. <laughs> Did you know you like to ride a bunny? Definitely, yes. So. I love my cat up. Also, Roger Rabbit. I, I don't think I've yeah. seen that. Because I was drawn that I way. I was impressed. <laughs> I love that line. Yes, that's a good I'm not, one. I'm not Here comes Janine. I'm just, trying, I'm just drawn that way. Yep. I'm just drawn good, that way. Good category, Carl. This is a this is a good new uh, it, new category. It, it, you haven't it, done it, one it, like this before, right? Uh, not like this. Mm -mm. Yeah, this is good. I, I am like astounded it. that, that I, I, I noticed that Hollywood copies itself, but like, oh my God, in the same year. I have enough yeah. material, oh, yeah. for, Rob. I have enough material for two more rounds. That's yeah. That's why it's got part one. <laughs> Take it. It, 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 I, I, I was surprised when I started researching. Like, oh my yeah. God, there's a lot. That's amazing. And there's, there's also might be a TV show type round of shows oh. that were basically mm. the same or very similar concepts. Monsters and Adam's Family. But yeah, you know, when they do it in the same year, they wouldn't have, uh, you know, it's all secret what they're working on. So how does it come out that they're so similar whenever well, they're... So if you ask the producers of the movies, they'll just say, oh, pure coincidence. But quite often it's a matter of some writer with a script goes to a studio, does a pitch meeting, doesn't get an offer, goes to the next studio, does a pitch meeting, does a bunch of pitch meetings to five different studios. And one of the studios says... You know, after he leaves, I don't like his script, but I like the idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, go it. look in the drawer, see if we have something similar to that already that we own, so we can not be accused of stealing his idea. Pull it out, dust it off, rewrite it, and shoot it. I remember Bugs Life and Ants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Were, were that's going to be one of Carl's. I just gave away the answer. Thanks, man. Oh, way to go. <laughs> oh, well. He's yeah, like well, nine Rob questions in the next the round. Carl, it would be obvious. Carl, Carl will forget. We will totally forget. I won't yeah. forget. But forget the, <laughs> the thing is, is that if you had tried to use those movies, we'd be like, oh, that's Anson. I, I was on such a roll that I actually wrote all three rounds. It doesn't only happen. 
All right, number one. What happened in the movies? Armageddon. Yes, it comes. Las Vegas, they built. I got it right. We got one point, at least. Where they all fit. <laughs> yeah, let's talk. In Las Vegas, they built the largest Ferris wheel, and we're not allowed to call it that. And two of the major corporations that run the Strip both started building them at about the same time. <laughs> and one finished first, so the other one took theirs down. Oh, that's uh, what a waste of money. money. Nothing that didn't happen was the Chrysler building and the Empire State building. All right, number two. Number two. The other one, Deep Impact. Deep Impact. All right, number three. There was, I heard a lot of discussion. Come and on. I wish I had a clip of Tom Hanks when he appeared. I, I think, I don't know if it's a Tonight Show, but on a talk show. And he's talking about people like just hated the end of that movie. We got in so much trouble. Yeah. You know, they hated the fact that the dog died. I said, but they're a puppy. There's a puppy. But people didn't care. The uh, dog died. They hated it. Turn right, who? Mike, way to go. <laughs> I think we switched them. I think we switched them. I think we, we switched, switched them. So the yeah. Good dog. job, team. Whichever Everybody team brought them, listen to you, Mike. There's a key. Why was there a puppy? Because oh, the dog yeah. died and we had to make a happy ending. And for folks who live around here, it was filmed in Moss Landing and Pacific Grove. And we mm. could show you the house. Number four. I never saw it. Canine. Yes. And uh, you have to spell it K9. Yeah, you can't spell it like C A N. You Number can't spell a C9. You have to pronounce cow it with a, with a K. Spell it with a K a and a nine, not a C A A C A N. Comes from cow with a K. All right. Nine. Number five. That one was Red Planet. Uh -huh. The other one. Was Mission to Mars? Uh, yes. We put Mission to Mars on both. Uh, so do we. Oh, hey, that's, <laughs> that's two. Way it. two. And head your bet. <laughs> Number seven. That was Despicable Me. That's what we were talking yes. about. The other one. That's incredible. Was Megamind. Yeah. Yay! Great uh, movie. Megamind is awesome. But to Toy Story three. And yeah, Number Toy Story nine. Three. That one was Olympus. Ah, oh. oh, Ryan. And you should Number argue that was. White yes. House. Yes. <laughs> all right. It's the only reason so, we were in last place is uh, so we get Mike to give us all the answers because we didn't have Mike. Mike. <laughs> Ryan said, "I it might be Olympus has fallen, but I'm you got to be more aggressive." See you Hi, next Ryan. week, guys. Bye, Carolyn. Bye, Carolyn. Bye, Carolyn. Bye, Carolyn. Great Carolyn. work on that page. And, and yeah, it was great. Work. All, all yeah. I can say for this round was thank goodness for trailers on TV. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Bill. You definitely helped. The real challenge for yeah. writing this round was writing a description that, except for the tack on at the end, matched both movies. Right. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, I haven't seen enough of these well, movies. For know. one of them, I just pulled the Wikipedia or the IMDb description off one of the movies because it, it worked for either movie. Good night, Vincent. Nice. Night, Vincent. Yeah. Hi, Vincent. Yeah. Have a great conference, Vincent. Oh, thank Take you. Take lots of photos. I want some selfies or else. Some selfies. I'll I'll try. No, you do. You don't try. You yeah. do. Yoda. There is, there is no, no try. Yoda on you oh, right. on May the 4th. I'll, yeah, come on, I'll, man. I'll do my best. No, you do it. Do or, or do not. There oh, is. You're going to be in so much trouble. And we're recording Yoda this. might have been reading, reading the secret. Okay. Being recorded. Right. Hey, hey. There's no try. <laughs> no try. There's no T in try. I know. I'll do my Yoda's best. saying, if you can't succeed, don't bother. Okay. Don't show up next I week to Yoda, trivia I if you don't Yoda have your selfies. Too. <laughs> I'm curious about scores. I'll try. Yeah. I'm trying. Okay, so let's see. Um, mm. We're in last place. Five pensive hours for Jack Smith. And for Mike Wolf. Yeah, right. <laughs> Take this moment to enjoy your score. Nice. Uh oh. Okay. Uh -oh. May the fourth leads to being ship faced on the stiff. Six. <laughs> Something Six. like that. Whoa. You just 9876. We're going to blast off. <laughs> get five on the last one. All right. Use coupon code Harlan Crow at checkout for $150,000 off. Six. Oh, I thought we did better than that, but I guess not. Okay, let Qui Gon's be Qui Gon's. Ten. Ooh. All right. 
Met Gala cockroach is greater than Trump. Devin. Seven. There's my four points that we would have had yeah, Bill, yeah. guys. I think we need six. a really hard, a really hard uh, bonus. Well, before we go to bonus, Susan, uh, and I'll just mention that, of oh, course, around it. Rounds in chat Carl. for double. Round is in chat for download for anyone who wants it. But who do you have doing rounds for next week, Susan? You know, Carl, you're so wonderful at this. <laughs> Between you and Karen, I, I just don't need, I don't know how I manage. Quit brown nosing, Carl. Gosh. <laughs> Kyle, Carl, what is your name again? Rob. Rob. <laughs> Rob Robert Kyle with the K. This straight. I know you guys are just completely different characters. I mean, just like. I know you, you don't even sound or look alike or anything, you know, but. Can I be Fonzie? <laughs> just Susan, just say, so next just week say, we have Jamie and we have yeah. Rob. So. Does that, that mean that mean Carl's going again? No, no. I need to, I need two <laughs> more people in a bonus. Or is it Rob, Rob? I'll do the bonus. I'm confused. Who's got that? Who said Bill, it? Bill. Bill. Bonus Bill. Bill. That's bonus. Okay. I'm always ready to do one. Gil, you're Gil. Who else do I hear? Hey. Bob, is that you? Yeah. Bob's Bob. chicken wants to do one. Bob wants to do one. No. No. I won't be here. I have a HOA meeting. Oh, um, man. You could let him have it, Robin. And then I won't be here the week after that because I'll be in New York. I don't think Denver's Where? done one in a while. Robin, yeah, why are you going to New news. York? I just did one. You were on vacation. Oh. I'm going to New York on May 13th. What are you going there for? See what? your daughter? Yes. yes. To see her graduate. I'm going to a graduation That's ceremony York, on that day as a golden grad at Humboldt. Oh. Aww. Hey, Mike, did you say you'll do it? anniversary. What? No. Oh. <laughs> I love that you guys volunteer each other. I thought he said something about the 11th. He's something. always waving his hand. Welcome. Welcome. He's always welcome like this. Huh? Just welcoming Robin to New York. Ah, oh, thank you. Wait, did I hear hey, Karen? Forget Karen about it. Did Karen say she can do it on the eleventh? Nope. Second, that? second Thursdays I have a meeting, so I never volunteer second uh -oh. Thursdays. Uh -oh. Right, that means she's going to take the other one week. Okay, well, I'll do third Thursday. Well, uh, you, uh, thanks for being so excited. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I'm just looking. I'm looking to see the who gratitude is out there. overwhelming. I could do a bonus whenever there's one available. Okay. Actually, the following week. All okay. right. So let's put Ron and Karen on that week. Okay. But next week, I need another person. I have a category. Susan, this is Peggy. I can do Peggy. one. Ooh. Yay. Yes. All right. Yes. Another category on George. I can now proceed to the bonus. <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank we you for that commercial interruption, volunteer. Carl. There was going to be no bonus until somebody volunteered. All right. Uh, so this next category. Um, make it horribly hard for them, not for uh, me. It, it, it might be a little challenging or it might be real easy for all I know for some people. But uh, I uh, researched many different sites, got several in agreement. But nonetheless, I am listing one as the authoritative source. The real list of biggest movies. According to Box Office Mojo, what are the top 10 grossing movies of all time adjusted for inflation uh -oh. as of the end of last year? So we have to come up with 10? <sighs> the top 10 highest grossing movies adjusted for inflation. No mono That's, rules? This, this is almost the same thing as asking what are the top 10 highest number ticket sales per movie? But, adjusted, for, adjusted for inflation. And who's your source again? Uh, there were several different sources that agreed, but I I used Box Office Mojo as the final single source. And, you and, know, we and, all and, use Box Office Mojo and, for and, and Carl. Wait, does as, this include uh, re-releases? Yes, I believe it does. That's what I thought. Okay, but not, but not like VHS, DVD, no, Blu-ray. This, no. this is Box Office. Okay. Yeah. Numbers. Okay. 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 All right. Breakout rooms. Open all rooms. 
I'll need to get resent. Yeah, you're in five, right? Yeah. I get oh, okay. Out. Thank you. Okay. Can Mega carry, mine. That's it. Yeah. Can we carry over <laughs> the ones from last time? I think it's going to be Titanic. I agree with that. Yeah. And Gone with the Wind. I agree with that. And uh, Wizard of Oz. Star Wars. Yeah. Star Wars. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Return of the Jedi. Um, E.T. Wizard of Oz. Oh, yeah. Jaws. Jaws. Yes. yes. Wasn't Avatar a big deal? Yeah, um, but I don't know if it would be the biggest. I never thing. saw it, so I don't know. Okay. Well, then forget about it. Well, <laughs> no, the reason I say that is because, like, with um, like Gone with the Wind, for example, they re release it in theaters. And so I'm wondering um, if that if that counts, you know, like when um, they re-release it in theaters, like I, I, said remember going, did. I remember going to see Gone with the Wind in the theater, you know, when they re-released it when I was in high school. Avengers, Infinity War, and Avengers Endgame. How about The Godfather? Yeah, I'm, I'm no. wondering about that. The Godfather was massive. Well, let's get to ten. I'm thinking. I'm thinking that some of these older ones are going to have, because he's adjusting. They're adjusted for, for um, yeah, you know, time. I think they're going to be much bigger than you. We think. don't have Avatar. We talked yeah. about yeah. not putting. Well, let's it. go. Let's let's put it on there, and we can talk about it. Sure. What, what does it replace? We'll, we'll just let's number just, eleven. Let's just yeah. Let's just add it. What about the sound of music? Ooh, wow. And it's it's Return of the Jedi for in Star Wars 2. They'll get very upset at you if you put Star Wars 2. Because I think what happens is um, you know, like like a movie like um Wizard of Oz. That was, I mean, they didn't have a lot of other movies to go to. So if you adjust right. it for the, for the, as if it was now. How about just, some of the Harry Potter movies? I, you know, I can remember lines down the block and around the block and. Harry Potter and the, and the, the first one is called Harry Potter and the. The, 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 the Deathly Hallows, the last two would be the biggest. Uh like the Deathly Hallows part two would be the biggest box office. Deathly Hallows, Deathly. I, I know the books were massive. Man, there's only 10? What the hell are we gonna take out? God, the Godfather was so big that was it was that also, big. Um, it was big, I remember. How about the, the exorcist? The problem, the the problem exorcist with the Godfather is that you can't take your kids to it. So something all the more reason to go. Hit, but if you can't take the family to it, you're you not know, selling as many tickets. But I remember, you know, some of these, like when I was like, I remember things like The Godfather, The Exorcist. It used to be movies were so big, they were massive because, like yeah. Susan was saying, there were there weren't that many movies, like, you know, there were just you know, there weren't, there just You went to go see the movie. The movie that was That's out. right. Yeah. There just weren't so many. Like The yeah. Omen. Right. These are all really good. I bet you they're the, all like in the top top 15. The, and I'm not, what I'm saying is, one, you, you, so you have the international box office. Oh, did he say U.S. or... What did he say? It's, he said all time. Um, <clears throat> all time, just for inflation. But did he say U.S. movie? No. Like American made 
He no, said he, according to box office mojo, so it's whatever they do. I don't know. I doubt there are any films from any other countries that have been as gigantically capitalistically successful as our movies. Because we're number one. We're on top. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I I well, Sound of Music is not American, is it? Yeah, so that's American a good reason to take it off the list. I, I actually, it? I actually heard a really cute story. I think it was on NPR recently. They they interviewed uh, Austrian people and had them watch the uh, Sound of Music. And most people in Austria have never Hilarious. even heard of this movie, and they were like, "What? <laughs> what?" <laughs> um, geez. I think this is really hard. I I would replace uh, Return of the Jedi with Force Awakens. Force Awakens? What was that? Well, I think it's... Oh. Is that from what? It's Star Wars also. But wasn't that from an era where half most of the returns were from videos? I don't know. No, Force, of, Force Awakens was huge, and it was huge internationally. Mm. It at the I think it. Yeah, so I mean, Avatar, Force Awakens, the the two Avengers movies. I would take off the Godfather and put on and and leave the Return of the Jedi. What about these so Avengers we'll put, movies? I've never even heard of these. The leave them on. Those are comic book movies. They're, they're really popular. They were they're, super they're, big. They're huge. But but yeah, I, they're, I do. They're think like that, they're like two and three. But you know what? Let me just say something controversial here. Do women really go see those? I mean, I've never seen them. I I, I don't know if. I got to go see him. I saw uh, the first one where he pushed, he has all those things on his, and all those diamond things he was collecting. It was so stupid. I'm just thinking about the audience. Was that Infinity War or was that Endgame? I didn't like it. <laughs> Brian goes, I don't like her anymore. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just wondering about ticket sales. You know, yeah, well, people went and saw him multiple times over and over and over. So if they didn't take a date with them, they went by themselves and they went. 10 times. I think what Jane's implying is that men with who can't find dates go to see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> they go with their buddies. You're right, Mark? How much time? Do You're you right? Yeah. Uh, we don't know exactly, but at some oh. point there'll be the two minute countdown. We have more than 10 up here. We're going to have to get rid of some. Yeah, we are. No. <laughs> I think, I don't know what I would take off that top 10. Exorcist. No, that's, but we've got 10. I think those are the best. I think those others are really good. How about Die Hard? We don't need more movies. We need to eliminate yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Um, E.T. was massive. It was like a. It was massive. It was, you know, there are certain, there are certain movies that every single person in the country has to go see in the theater, you know? Yeah, I think that. I think a minute that, warning. I'm taking a photo of this. I like, I like to go with our first 10. I think our first 10 are good, but leave those others on there because I bet you did, they are. The, move Avatar up. Uh, in place of what? Uh, gone with the Wind. No! Yes. Gone with the Wind was huge. Yeah. And it's replayed over and over and over and over. Dr. Zhivago. No. Dr. Zhivago, yes. Yes. Avatar, I never saw that. Avatar it was number one. Huge. We got to replace something, guys. Well, well then huge. let's take a vote because we got 10. Who replaced Return of the Jedi then? No. <laughs> I didn't we even see Avatar. We cannot Avatar. have three Star Wars movies on our top 10. Yeah, right, Dr. Zhivago as one of these. Uh, no. Dr. Zhivago is number 10. No. So what do we take off? Star Wars The Force Awakens. No, no. Return of the Jedi. I think I, I like what we have. 
Uh, Avatar needs to be up. I think the Exorcist yeah. and the Sound of Music should go on there. What we need to decide in 46 seconds is which of these 10 come out for anything else you want to put in. Quick, somebody make a decision. Avatar replaces Return of the Jedi. Go for it. Go for it. And put New Hope after the other Star Wars. Oh, order is not important. Oh, yeah. Well, no, he's saying it's called The New Hope. That's what number four is. Oh, A New Hope. Star Wars, A New Hope. Is this what we're going with? Is everybody happy? So, Rick, I mean, Star Wars nobody's is... ever happy, but we can <laughs> the, the original Star Wars is not on our list. It is. It, it is. Yeah, that's called A New Hope. Oh, okay. What's that one after Harry Potter? The Exorcist? What about Ghostbusters? <laughs> kick his ass. Does anybody have 80 for Brady on their list? Wow. That uh, was a very decisive. Uh, that was hard. What did you say? Yeah, Does anybody have 80 for Brady on their list? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, we just, we just saw that. I just saw that too. I, I just have to, I have to make, I'll, I'll poke a little fun at uh, a team. Um, there's so much wrong with this circled answer. What? <laughs> what? Who, put wow. Who put that? Return of the Jedi was the third movie and it's episode Who six. That. So, it's either three or or so. Yeah, it can't be yeah. two. Sorry. We so took I, it off after Ryan talked. I know you didn't talk it off, taking it, take it off. So I I I I, I just well, had to. Carl, 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 Kyle. Carl, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle it could have been it. worse. It could have been. It could have been Star Trek two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Star Trek to return of the Jedi. Space, right. space falls to no. the search for more money. Uh, that was hard. I can tell you that this was hard. Bill's team should have probably just put Bill in charge and everybody else left. Why? He might, have gotten, he might have gotten a 10 if Bill had just been given the whole round to himself. What? I can you guys tell you to... that uh, people were not apparently not considering the power of compound inflation nearly enough and considering mm, their answers, I that did. None of these. I did. None of I these the is old more ones. recent than 1997. I said wow. all these old movies. Well, I got. List, I got. I think I got five. Then We're the most five. recent movie in this list is from 1997. We're after. So, yeah, um, <laughs> the, the older people on our team were voting for older movies. Old Half of them came out before I was born. So. <laughs> I got vetoed on one old movie. Number one is Gone with the Wind. Oh, yeah, damn! With an oh, oh, adjusted off. number of 1,895,421,699. Well, how, how did they sell that many profit. tickets? Roughly 202,286,200. So another thing you aren't most people were not considering is uh, in other than one of these, most of these were released in the days before home video really was a thing. And yeah. that many of these movies got multiple releases year after year after yeah. year after year. Like well, I know with the wind. Were Disney films, but yeah, Disney released their good ones every seven years. Gone, Gone with the Wind saw like probably dozens of releases over the years. Uh, number well, two is a movie. Out of all the good ones, I then. <laughs> number two is a movie that also saw numerous releases. Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. Mm -hmm. hey. Got one right. <laughs> number Can three. We put that? <laughs> yeah, we put it. The Sound of Music. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. I would never have guessed that. We put that on our list, but it got voted down by the young people. The other, the other thing people <laughs> really haven't thought about is that in general, movie attendance isn't that high today compared to the past because a lot of people know they can just wait for it to show up on Disney Plus or on DVD or Blu-ray. Yeah, 80 for Brady was on like a streaming service about two weeks after we paid for it to see it in the theater. Yeah. Yeah. Never heard of it. Okay, Rob, e. you deserve to be punished for paying money. E. 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 Yeah, we got, we got a point. We got a we point, a point, Karen. Got and Star Wars. We guessed the right Star yeah. Wars movie. E.T. We didn't think of E.T. All right, number mm -hmm. five, the most recent movie on the list. Titanic. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the most recent? Yeah. Uh, we had that as number one. That is the most recent one on the list. 
the only one that really came out during the era of home video. Number six. Uh, the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. Oh, oh, I was oh, that. That. Oh, that was not on my radar. <laughs> How much is that? For I would never have thought of that. We should have listened to Gail. Gail. Did Gail <laughs> pick that one? No, but it's, just just the whole idea on. about older films. Gail was on to that. Number it's, seven. It's probably none of us have ever seen that movie. It's on the way. I saw Are it. You serious? That's, that's, that's true. true. It was on TV. You old Brenner. Oh, my God. I used to watch that every year. Yes, we had number seven. Dun, dun, number dun, seven. Dun, 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 seven. Yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. Jaws, of course. That one. Uh, I heard that one mentioned more than once. We got it. It's number seven Dr. on our Chivago. list. Uh, uh, oh my God! Oh, you guys really? made us put it in. Bill. Sorry, Bill. We didn't. Yeah, but we didn't modify it yet. We oh, were we still arguing Bill, about our that. movies for too uh, long. We had it as number three. I was listening, and like everything Bill was saying was working. The Exorcist. Oh, oh, yeah, got it. Nice. Oh. I didn't realize actually. He took that right, on. Down on that one. That's crazy. That it's that's, that high that's on a bit the list. Crazy, given that that's not a family. Friendly Damn it! No, we took it off. I can't we, believe that that's uh, normal. Also, people should have asserted never, ourselves better, Susan. Yeah, Robin. Like or we we almost never make the, the big artery list. artery over and over and over again. Very hard for a horror movie to make the big list. And so oh, no. oh, oh, right. oh, I didn't even yeah. think of that. Yeah. Yep. That's we did. That. we leave that on ours? Yeah, we did. I left it on there. Yeah. I, I didn't even like think of it. arguing with you that the Lion King would have beaten up no way. Well, there is a lot of arguing about a whole bunch of movies, but you know. Wow. Damn, guys. Mm. Damn for Yay compounding. Old this. Yay, old people. And Damn, if we can get the scores in in five minutes, we can finish before 11.35. Yay, I like both, it. Or, that was an hour ago. My gosh, well, for guys. us, it's still there. Yeah, that was 24 mm -hmm. hours ago. All right, scores. Right. <laughs> scores, scores, scores. Did you guys need me to do something? Scores. scores. I was looking at these. I wanted to argue. Scores. No, it, it scores. Be a real separator unless everybody scored equally mediocre. Nope. Nope, we're better. Point point oh, of order. Yeah. Excuse me, point of order. Yeah. Uh -huh. The the box office for Avengers Endgame is two billion seven hundred ninety seven million. So what how are we coming up with one point five mm. for Gone with the Wind? Uh oh Carl. Carl. He said he got us off box office mojo. That's the source. I, he names the source, and that's the source. I name the source. I also mentioned I had two other sources that had the same information, but I didn't say it was guaranteed accurate. Okay, so then, is it, is and it, is that and that's box office? As of when? As no, that number you talking about has all the uh, downloads and things like that. That's not well, what Kyle's counting. And we're talking uh, worldwide or domestic. I don't know. Carl, what were your numbers, worldwide or domestic? Let's double check what the link says. His, I found the link, it's top lifetime adjusted gross income by ticket price. We were so, so close to 11. If you count the tickets sold at the movie theater, the box office, not video downloads, not streaming services and, you know, red box type of things and Netflix and payments. Because what, what movie are we arguing about? Scores, Any scores. Movie. I'm arguing about the whole list. Let's finish this. It doesn't matter. Because <laughs> <laughs> Avatar's box office was 911,000. So anyway, those of you who are listening, come on. It's lots of fun. Right. The question <laughs> is not what, what is the what is the ontological box office? Is These are so hard to do categories like this, you guys. These are really hard to do this category because you like there's so many. No, what's easy to do is the scores are easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> but hard to get to. Some, somebody's looking for the story. Yes. All right. May the fourth leads to being slight based on the sixth. <laughs> based on the sixth. Three. No, we had four. Four. The Star Wars we named was the correct Star Wars. Oh, okay. I didn't think it was the right Star Wars. Okay. Use coupon code yeah, Herbert first Pro and check not, out for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. The first one, Gail. Five. We're in the lead, you guys. Let's just stop here. 
<laughs> Gail, the first Star Wars was not the first episode in the Star Wars. Uh, well, the first oh, okay. one was four. We all know Star Wars is the number as episode four, right? No, we don't all know this. All yeah. right, five pensive hours for Jack Smith. I got us at seven. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. your geniuses. Geniuses for sure. Jesus. Now just, just old and, and Mike's on our team. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so Met Gala Cockroach is greater than yeah. Tolkien. I have to second what was said before because I just googled a bunch of these quickly and there's a lot of them that are current two billion plus so I don't get okay. it but What's it won't score? it won't matter because we lost by a lot two we got two we only got two <laughs> oh that hurts oh uh, wah, wah, wah. I, I will say that in my research a lot of the sites I found that listed <clears throat> supposedly box office revenue and I'm not talking about your sources necessarily but a lot of the ones I looked into were actually reporting total gross revenue from all sources including home video and streaming and may, your source may have also listed domestic and not worldwide i had the same problem when i did gangster movies top grossing stuff like this is always we haven't yet yeah we got six let qui-gons be qui-gons yay ah. Well done, and Quigons. there's Bill on the winning well team, done. and he beat us by four points. We Thank you, Bill. Wow. Him you're, you're oh, like, Bill, you're in. You have to take your channel down because you are psychic, Kevin. No, no, he beat you by way more than four. He oh, just come proves on. you can use logic. Apply for the 500,000. Seven. 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 Oh, Romero contributed oh, nothing. Oh. I just need to know. <laughs> Oh, no. He's trying to say we won, and he contributed nothing. <laughs> but you guys I, won. I said puppet, and then that that helped Bill think of. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> liar, liar. Yay, Carl! Well done all tonight. Right. Great job, Carl. Good except job, for <laughs> except I they were all media related. Said, I take back what I said. I found your list, and if you scroll down you see the newer movies adjusted. So the newer movies are taken into account and they are adjusted. So Avatar is, is uh, 15. The adjusted uh, box office is 890 million. So I am wrong. You're right. Wow. We, thank you, Ryan. Here's a cat. And here's a cat. You're I, want, I want to I'm tell dumb. my team something. Keep him away from Elf. <clears throat> I want I want to tell my team that I have seen five of the top ten movies that wow. we need. Oh. You should have just gone with what Janine has oh. seen. And that Janine. would have been it. Would have done better. That would have been a good, good strategy. Yeah. I've seen strategy. seven out of the ten. I've seen all of them. Well, good job, everybody. Thank you guys for yeah, showing seen up. Eight or nine. Carl, we'll really see appreciate it. I've seen yeah, maybe week. seven of them. Thank you, my team. I've seen nine Let's of see. them. Thanks, we everybody. Had really, we had a really good oh. team that was really just doing a great job. I, I'm sad that I miss going and hang out with every team. I liked going to every team, but it was fun being on one well, Carl, this, home team. This, this was great until the final category. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was the only one I was able to contribute any kind of <laughs> my original my original bonus category had nothing to do with TVs or movies, and I I just said, yeah, I've got to figure out. I got to come up with a bonus that's related to TVs and movies because otherwise it ruins the whole theme of everything else. Yeah, I like the fact yeah. that the we whole can't night have was that. a theme. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. I am nice work, nice work, Carl. And 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 the, the double take round, I wrote that this afternoon. I, I had a different Very round. Good. Wow. Ready to go, and, and you've I got three great names. Carl, that was my favorite round. And that's the one that you wrote up like at the last minute. I love yeah. it. I wasn't Not sure if I could get it bad. Done that was just time. my favorite. See, Ben, it's not it hard to put on a category. It was interesting. Yeah, well, you know, I might do them more often, but. Yeah, you I, can do I, it at the last minute. Someone interrupted me a lot, a lot when I tried to start my second round. So that kind of dissuaded me from doing another round. Bob flipped into party mode. Bob saw an acid again. Woo! His chickens are dancing. Party time. So, so I, I would vote to never do a box office thing again because it's just I just looked up Avatar: The Way of the Water surpassed Titanic. It's the third highest grossing, and that that's just recently out, so it can't be like it's Blu-ray sales. 
So I don't get it. In in adjusted might be, inflation, might adjusted be dollars. The one that I think did. a lot of these are really hard to do. If and not just this, we've had other categories where we've tried to do like like Kevin said, like monster. I mean, uh, mobster movies or the best or the most popular book or whatever. They're really hard to do unless you're doing I, like Siskel and Ebert or something. I, it, it, I wasn't that excited about this round i was just desperate to come up with a tv movie related <laughs> bonus round right. and I, I kept coming up with lists of like crap there's only seven things in the list he cited his source mike is yeah right. yeah it. you cited his source it's I just like really... movies by length well let nice you look if you look on that page that I just sent, it even says gross adjustments are explained here. And there's a link to a whole separate page that explains how they got the gross adjusted uh, sales. Yeah, it's based on the ticket price of the day kind of thing and, and the and what the value Ooh, the was. The sting, Mary Poppins, Forrest Gump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember how big Jaws was? Of, you know what Exorcist, Jaws, and E.T. Do you remember how big those were? They dominated the, you know, people talked about them for a long time. Kevin, They're still if, culturally part of our culture. If, if you're doing adjusting for inflation, then the current one that was just released wouldn't be adjusted for inflation because it's just whatever it is. And if that's the largest number, then how is that wrong? Because to the ticket sales... A ten to twelve dollars each. Back when they sold them a long time ago, they were two or three. Count the tickets, not the month, the number of dollars it made. I, I was going to do a bonus round of Figures. list the ten major studios during the golden age of Hollywood, but there's only eight. Oh, <laughs> during the studio era, you could have done another. Uh, but there, Hollywood there were Walk another half day. dozen that weren't major. So yeah, but at, at that point, it, you just yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure we could add an argument about what a major studio is. There you go. <laughs> yeah, would, it's better if we I do stuff like there's, like there's Robin did well with like good major big A's like name five. name ten states that are starting with these letters or something. You know, <laughs> something that's definitive. We have an answer for not not, not, not ambiguous. I think doing, this yeah. category was great. Thank you. Well, it was fun. I, I didn't mind it because, I'll, like yeah. I said, I'll, it was really fun to think about I it. Have sitting, sitting, waiting to go are much more straightforward. All right. All I, 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 now know what I, yeah. I now know what I should have used as a definition for RG Bargy. Trivia night on Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> We're all friends. We can get, we all can argue fine. That's all right. No big deal. Yeah, you, right. you do now, music part stuff. Of trivia, in my experience, there's always somebody who comes up with another answer and a good reason for it. Yeah. That's no matter what the trivia is. Especially today on the day, the national day of reason. So we should have lots of extra reason. <laughs> Did you yesterday. do a category on that? I did. Last year? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what if I remember. I, it. I considered doing the double take round without the extra who is in it thing and just accept Ooh. either one of two answers for each question. That would have been a lot tougher. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking at the box office mojo chart, and I'm pretty sure it's domestic, not worldwide, which is why the disc discrepancy that Rob's seeing. Oh, and. Well, and again, they're not just taking the total gross and adjusting it yeah. for inflation. They're taking individual ticket sales. Yeah. And then adjusting what those individual prices were to, so you have to look at like what they're saying is a lot more people went to see movies back then because <laughs> one houses were bigger. Now there's all stadium seating and you can fit less people into a house. Yeah. So they, they're taking individual ticket number of tickets sold and then adjusting be, each be of those. Very prices. glad I didn't just go with a straight list of international ticket sales total because that list it's almost all crap you've never heard of released in china that like a billion people have seen this one a billion people have seen that one a billion people have seen that one because it's the only thing that's available yeah gone with the wind is number 99 on that list <laughs> bob your chickens are need some oil they're squeezed <laughs> <laughs> i thought i mute Oh, they were squeaking like That's they okay. did it sound like cute. a I like it. Okay. All right, everybody. It was great to see you guys. I've got to go close my chickens up. You gotta go chicken her. All right, chicken bye, people. Chicken Thanks for I had all one the chicken work, that Carl. stayed out all night right. last good night. Good job, Carl. Good job, Carl. Oh wow. It was, it was a quick bye. night tonight. Carl, Thank that you. was fun. It's not that yeah, late. Imagine how fast it would have been if I hadn't done the A V PowerPoint round.
answers. Yeah. Red answers offering this. We'd have been done yes, 20 minutes. Exactly. Well, great what job, Carl. These, I mean, these... why did you have a chicken that stayed out, out all night? Was she just obstreperous she, and didn't, she's, wouldn't I, I closed the door a little early and I I counted and I thought it was short one, but I don't remember numbers well. And I go, uh, I don't know. So what, what did she do? Weeks? Did she go out to the I don't know and... where she was because when I took Spurs back at the break, everyone was in but her but it was still light so i didn't close it up then and i don't know what she did so i'm hoping she's not deciding to sleep somewhere else because she was she very happy because she got up in the morning and go out and she didn't need to wait for me she was yeah. a happy chicken she probably but, yeah. um found some place to roost you know like what, that's what i'm fearing one we'll of these weeks, Carl we'll and everybody, nest. we should do a we should do a, a, a trivia where we make it as fast as possible, where every question has to have ten words or less in it, and every answer has one word answer. Why, Janine? Because we'll your, see how fast we can do it. Janine, did your did your so chicken fun, have like glitter on yeah, her? Yeah, it'll still be fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Maybe I'll do it as a one night. I'll think of, and, I'll think of that whole category myself. Lipstick on right. her right. 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 Oh. She come back smelling so like she a. She doesn't live it up. She just went. Was she smoking a cigarette out on the porch? Yeah, like yeah. 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 was there was there were there like empty her. empty pizza boxes and beer cans yeah. around? Um, yeah. I'm yeah. going yeah. around yeah. looking yeah. for that yeah. now yeah. because I don't know. Because <laughs> yeah. she's always the last yeah. one to go to bed. Yeah. Too. Yeah. She's one of the young ones. Well, he said. He, he so, just rattled them off. Could be. And yeah. we've got seven on the last round. We pulled up into. Bob, you're not muted. I. I was. Damn it. No, you're not. You're not. You got. <laughs> well, I, I got seven in the last I touch, round. I can't touch my phone without screwing something up. It's very <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I was going to tell Janine. I went out. I went out. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I went out. Uh, uh, it was like last week. I walked out there, and one of the Stokey roosters was just hanging out. I didn't. He wasn't in. I go, How did I do that? So, no. Oh, so it's but, not the only one. I, it's I have one yeah. young one that wants to stay out late. But I do have a fox around, and I do have a skunk around. Oh yeah, it's, those, yeah. Those are hazardous yeah. to chicken's health. Yeah. Is, yeah. Faith, no, Romero, is yeah, Faith still around? Yeah. So Robin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh tell uh tell your little one who's not so little anymore. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's what college? What college, Robin? Columbia University. Oh, nice. Oh, ooh, nice. Congratulations. And she's already got a job this summer? Yep. Yeah, uh not for the summer. She's taking the summer off and she has a job in Washington, DC starting in August. End of August. What what's she gonna be doing? She's working for one of those Beltway Bandit corporations. It's, I think it's called ICF or IFC. I can't remember. It's a climate change consulting corporation, and she's oh. gonna be doing coding. I think. And she's here's been... the skunk encounter. Oh my! Oh yeah, we got skunked the other night. <laughs> <laughs> I took How did the you bus. do that? Well, so in, in my neighborhood, I live in like a little tract, and there's a there's a little perimeter trail that goes around the neighborhood. And at this time of the year, the foxtails are super high, and they haven't mowed the grass yet. They they do a little weed whacking any day now, uh, but it hasn't happened yet. So Maggie my little shithead ran up into the grass, into the tall grass, and I could hear the skunk spraying oh. in the grass. I think she just ran into it in the grass or she heard a sound and ran after it. Squirrel. So, you could you yeah. could take that as a show and tell to your homeowners association. <laughs> no, they'll just be mad at me for having my dog off leash. Off That's the leash again. <laughs> Robin's got her dog off the leash again. You don't have to tell them that. Part. Picking up the neighborhood. <laughs> Today, uh, Ian Harris had something cute on his page. He was calling the Karen. Uh, her last name is it's Karen von Gentrification. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wait a minute. Are these the dogs that sleep on your bed? Yes, that's the. Those are the oh dogs. Oh my god! Yes. So now yeah. they have this. And how did the de-skunking work for you? And and in fact, that was the evening that they got skunked. De-skunking worked fine. Yeah. Um, you get it soon enough, and it will. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's the the recipe works great. Hydrogen peroxide, Dawn dish soap, and um, baking soda. Yeah, you give it time for the mercaptan to soak into the hair, and it doesn't work that well. Oh, I see. Got to go straight home. And well, I couldn't put up with the smell for very long anyway, so I'm going to take them straight to the bath. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Before we hang up, Susan, I want to comment on your beautiful birthday flowers. They they look fresh as the day you got them. Yeah, aren't they great? They're not my birthday, but they were Caspian's birthday, but he gave them to me because it was his birthday. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that and sweet? I was going to say, it's not to give Santa to birthday. his mother on his own birthday flowers. And that's, that's so yeah. sweet. He's such a so sweet. Thanks for giving me life, Ma. That's what yeah, he said. Yeah, that's what he did. But the thing about him is, is they're, they are beautiful, but if you bump them, they explode and all the leaves go. <laughs> <laughs> are they like those son. Star Trek flowers? Be careful. I can't get my son to return my text message. Your sons are very attentive, Susan. <laughs> well, uh, well, I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess they are. They are. They're 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 attentive, but you know, we don't talk that much. I only talk to Sterling maybe two two days a week. He'll call. He calls me whenever he's riding home. Talked to my son in months. That's really? That's he a lot. He's driving home from work, and he he gets in the car. He starts up the car and he used to, he used to call me like four times, five times a week, but now he's down to baby two times a week. And we talk from the time he leaves his work to time he gets home. And, he, and it's always about how bad his day was. <laughs> Susan, that's a lot. Is it, it really? Is. Yes. It is. Yeah. I, I, talk I, to one son, I talk to one son three times a day and the other time once every three months. Huh. Wow. Yeah, son. Because one's in Korea and one works. Oh yeah. Korea. That makes sense. Mine aren't there. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Caspian is coming over once a week or so, I guess. But um, yeah, he comes by and yeah, I, I know I, I've got it made, I guess. I just want those. You didn't hear me say that. You want the what? <laughs> those those nothing. little things. I want the little nothing. children. Cats, more cats. She wants more oh, cats. Far away from you. But it ain't going to happen. So <laughs> I have to just deal with it. How far away is Caspian from you, Susan, normally? Like, where do you mean live? Distance between where he lives and where you live. Oh, 20, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. That, that's a huge distance. Is it? Yeah, well, he I, lives I across, live across the street. Yeah, I live across the street from my parents. So. Yes, I know. I've been to your parents' backyard. Yes. It's across Caddy Corner to his house. He has a, They have a koi pond. Caddy pond's Corner? Place. How appropriate. <laughs> Caddy Corner? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so well, that good night, was... everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night we, had, we had to reload most good of the night. koi because they were getting too big for the pond, and now we've replaced them with small ones. Look at you have a koi pond? You okay, said you had a koi pond? I think I've yeah, got yeah. this set up yeah. right. May yeah, 11th no next week, was... right? May 11th? Could never oh, show yes, because I fly on Saturday. I had it on the wrong day last time. Oh. Yeah, it's the 11th. Yes, All right, y'all. Good night. Great to see you. Talk to you soon. I hope to see you soon. Bye. Night.